eight new teams. I think that was a bigger hurdle than I thought. Tough finish today for Northwestern, but what about the Cats as a whole? Overall, this is a good year for them because I think they bounced back when things were really looking bleak. Pat Fitzgerald really stepped up and got the team together, and they played well down the stretch. Ohio State. The way those kids play today, my hat's off to them. Luke Fickle, fabulous job under incredibly difficult circumstances. Lost a lot of close games. What about Penn State, speaking of difficult circumstances? Very difficult situation, but I think if you look at what uh, creates a, a really successful situation for them for the year, it's running the football and being able to play outstanding defense. They just couldn't get the defensive part of it done today. Great day for Purdue, bowl eligible. And the three of us have more of an appreciation how good work, how much good work Danny Hope's done. Congratulations to him and the Purdue program. And finally, Wisconsin heading to Indianapolis. Well, clearly uh, one of the best teams, one of two, the best teams in the Big Ten really did a tremendous job. I think when they improve defensively, this is going to be a team that we got to keep an eye on. And Coach, what are you doing? I, 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 Hold that up. I need to take a look at myself. You cannot up. win gracefully. I, You're I, incapable I know. It, of I, winning I gracefully. I tried for a little bit. I just I couldn't do it. <laughs> We'll gracefully wrap up the final drive right after this. There are over half a million apps and counting on the iPhone. Apps that can take you anywhere and do anything. You might say there's no limit to what this amazing device can do. So the question to ask is, why would anyone want to limit the iPhone? We don't. Truly unlimited data for your iPhone, only from Sprint. BTN hits the hardwood for college hoops. Behold, the exhilarating moments of non-conference play at Friend and Paul and the Illini take the floor. Big Ten basketball presented by GMC today, only on BTN. USA Prime Credit, tell Peggy your problem. Hey, Peggy, I got five dadgum charges here for Miss Priss's Cat Emporium. Dead gum? Uh, Peggy, tell me, do, do I sound like a man who'd have five dead gum charges at a Miss Priss's Cat Emporium? You break up, call back next week. I'm not too old to find you, son. Want better customer service? Switch to Discover. Rank number one in customer loyalty. It pays to Discover. both time and money by buying equipment on auctiontime.com online auctions for farm and construction equipment trucks and trailers auctions are ending every wednesday on auctiontime.com so there is always machinery to bid on download the free auctiontime.com app and place bids from anywhere with your smartphone with no buyer's fees you can't go wrong with auctiontime.com auctiontime.com is featuring an end of the year auction for wednesday december 14th view that equipment and register to bid for free at auctiontime.com today The final drive is brought to you by Sprint, all together now. Your Sprint Unlimited update looks at Dan Persa throwing for 245 yards. Denard Robinson, the QB, still ran for 170 plus two scores. B.J. Cunningham had two scores as well. Jonathan Brown for the Illini with 14 tackles on the day. Meanwhile, your quick and loading's amazing performance once again, feel like a broken record here. It's number 28 for Wisconsin, Monty Ball. For more touchdowns, he continues to climb the charts on the all-time list. He's number two in total touchdowns in the history of the NCAA. Just a remarkable run. And I remember we were all here back in late October when that first time Wisconsin played Michigan State and it ended, and we were all saying, like, man, if this could be the rematch, this is exactly what everyone would want it to be. Guess what? It's the rematch. It's going to be fun next week in Indianapolis. We will, of course, spend the week getting you ready for it. We will be on location. In case you forgot how it all went down on that night in October, let's take a look at it as we bid you adieu from the final drive. 
three-man rush. Cousins on the last play of regulation. Chucks it to the end zone. Caught. Michigan State's caught it on a rebound. Tuck. Hold on. It is just short of the end zone. After further review, the runner did cross the line. We tip off the full day of basketball on a Sunday in Champaign with the 5-0 and Illini next on BTN. Welcome everyone to Assembly Hall here in Champaign, Illinois, returning home from Mexico, champions of the Cancun Challenge. BTN Men's Basketball is presented by GMC, the Illini, hoping they've recovered from their plane ride home from Cancun. Today they host the Cougars of Chicago State. Chicago State comes into this one, coached by Tracy Dildy. This is how the uh, Cougars line up. Matt Samuels, our Darius Simmons, Yari Nelson, Lee Fisher, Jamie Robinson leads the team in both scoring, rebounding, and block shots. For Illinois, same starting five that's played at the beginning of the game, the last four games. Lone senior, Sam Matiscalco playing very good basketball, his first go-around with the Illini, DJ Richardson, the MVP of the Cancun Challenge, Paul Griffey, and Myers Leonard round out the starting five with my partner, Eddie Johnson, former Illini great. I am Eric Collins, and Eddie, let's put your feet to the fire. What are your peak keys well, to victory? Chicago State at 0-5. The key with any losing team is to take care of the basketball, especially on the road, and they've been doing it at big fashion, over 20 a game. And then Illinois, look, avoid a Cancun hangover. Over. Hey, I hear that's the nice vacation <laughs> spot now. I know how I am when I come back from vacation, Eric. I just want to just lay around and be lazy. That better not happen today. Illinois has to come out and play well. All right, we're ready to play some basketball. Tenth time these two schools have met on the hard court. Illinois has never lost against Chicago State. Working the whistles, Mike Sanzier, Eric Curry, Tim Stewart. Had a nice moment earlier before with these officials. It's the same group that worked the Illini game last year when the first eight minutes were played with a women's basketball. They were joking about it, but there was no joking about it no, last year. No, no mistake this time. And the Chicago State team is going to employ zone. They can't guard man to man. So patience from Illinois, like we just saw in the first possession, will be important all game long. First shot of the game, a three-pointer, Sam Matiscalco. Anis Calco, graduate student out of Chicago, first three years of eligibility. Played in the Missouri Valley Conference with Bradley. Shot missed along the wing by Jeremy Robinson. We expect Chicago State to play Helton Skelter, which will allow Illinois to get just that. Any shot they want all day long, but patience is important. You don't want to lose sight of your offensive philosophy. Now the Cougars will set up the offense. This is our Darius Simmons. Second shot, Jeremy Robinson. This one rips right through. Well, the most dangerous team you face is a team that comes into a building understanding that they might leave with an L. It's probably going to happen, and they're going to play loose. And right there, you see the quick shot from three. The line I've taken two shots. Both of them have been three-pointers. First shot from Myers Leonard. Little too strong. Left-handed up and in. Tyler Griffey. Well, you know, Bruce Weber employing a three-guard offense. That means it's imperative that Griffey and Leonard play big inside, attack the glass, and play good defense. Both Griffey and Leonard already really close to passing their numbers in both points and rebounds from what they had last year over an entire season. Ball poked away on the run out. It's going to be Illinois basketball. Tracy Dildy picked up that loose ball. He's accustomed to picking up loose balls. He was a former great guard at the high school level in Chicago. Played for Sonny Cox and Martin Luther King. 
And uh, he'll be matching wits with Bruce Weber. Yeah, uh, over 300 lifetime wins. Well, in learning, I think that's that's the key with Chicago State, having an opportunity to play top schools, seeing how things are done, putting their players in a situation they can experience this. It's going to help as the year goes on. Bruce Weber, 301 lifetime wins, 198 of them coming here with the Illini. Another three ball, Tyler Griffey, toss it in. You know, I, love, I used to love to play in these type of games because no matter what Illinois tries to do, it's going to be wide open because Chicago State's going to play that type of ball game. And again, Bruce Weber's going to have to rein them in every now and then to say, look, we need to stay in our philosophy because things are going to change next week when they face Maryland and Gonzaga. That schedule going to get really tough in a hurry for the Illini. Cougars working the offense. Robinson's been firing them up early and often in this one. Misses that one. Manis Calco starts the offense. Big fella, Leonard. Skip pass. Richardson. That's how you play the game. You know, the double team comes down, especially against the zone. You know the weak side is open. They had to give up a man to squeeze in defensively, and Leonard finds him. So three three-pointers and a tap-in for Illinois. And they're already up by eight, and they'll have the ball back as it's kicked out of bounds. Here it is right now. You, you get the double, you show patience. Once teams start to squeeze in, you got the shooter on the weak side, and he can shoot it with anybody. Can shoot it with Eddie Johnson, if you ask me. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm holding <laughs> that thought for a minute here. <laughs> Griffey tied up, gets it to Maniscalco. Now they'll start the offense. Illinois, a perfect 5 0 on the year. Griffey hangs in the air, a little bit short, and we're going to have a push underneath. It's going to go against Chicago State. Foul on Lee Fisher, senior from Dalton, Illinois. Lee Fisher played his first three years at Northern Illinois in the Mid American Conference. Graduated from Northern and decided to play one more year of basketball as a graduate student it, it's for Chicago State. And it's helpful to uh, Tracy Bildy, you know, trying to teach young guys, trying to get them to understand philosophy and, and how to play basketball the correct way. Well, you bring a veteran in, a guy that's willing to still extend his college career and play, I think the young guys look up to him. Fisher getting his master's degree from Chicago State in library sciences. Wow. Knows his way around the Dewey Decimal System, I'd imagine. This is Fisher, curl pass. Yari Nelson, left-handed jumper. And we're gonna have a push going for the rebound. It's gonna be against Jeremy Robinson. Eddie, that's his second foul. We haven't played four minutes yet. Yeah, well, uh, it's, a lot of guys are going to pick up fouls here. Uh, because of the type of the game that you're playing, it's not a normal structured game, and Chicago State wants to play that way. Uh, they want to push the ball. They're going to go to different zones, and they're going to be physical. Nice catch by Maniscalco. It's going to lead to a break. Maniscalco gets it back. Good give and go. Well, he's a smart player. I mean, you know, in Cancun, he really showed his wits about him, especially late in the Illinois State game where he basically hit the big bucket to win the game. Chicago State just hit one of their first five shots. Fisher, power move, blocked from behind by Leonard. That's his 19th block over the period of five games, and they're going to need that from him. Leonard along the baseline tried to thunder Jim and it's poked away. Well, we're talking about right. And this is what the Illini will have to do all year. Take advantage of their situation, Maniscalco. Your American dream is out there. Go get it. Dreams don't come easy. So put on your work boots, fire up your laptop, pour yourself a cup of coffee, because there's going to be some late nights. American Family Insurance is your American dream insurance. We protect more than your home, your car, your business, your life. We protect your dream. Your dream is out there. Go get it. We'll protect it. American Family Insurance.
Saturday, December 3rd. Experience the first ever Big Ten Fan Fest presented by Dr. Pepper. 200,000 square feet of indoor fun at the Indiana Convention Center. Fans with game tickets get in for free. Oh no, you've got to be kidding me. Where are you going? The store. I think I got a virus and who knows what might happen. There's a faster way online. PCmatic.com. PCmatic.com? PCmatic is a free download that will take care of viruses and a lot more. That's PCmatic.com. Oh, look here. PCmatic found a nasty virus. PCmatic also thinks your computer is slow and probably freezing, right? It's slow and I restart it about once a week. PCmatic will fix it all with the click of a button. This is a lot faster. And the virus is gone. Online video should be faster, too. PCmatic also boosted your internet speed. Can PCmatic keep my computer running this way? PCmatic runs automatically and sends a report to your inbox. Great. Thanks, honey. You saved me a trip to the store. <laughs> I needed the car anyway. Girls' night out. Honey? Go to PCmatic.com today for your free download. That's PCmatic.com. Only on BTN. Bruce Weber's Illini on top of Chicago State, 13 to three. Glad you could join us with a man who could put the ball in the cup. Former Illini, everything. Shooting guard, small forward, he could light it up. Eddie Johnson, I am Eric Collins, and Eddie, Bruce Weber, a little bit worried his team would be a little flat today out of the shoot. Long plane ride home from Cancun. So far, so good. Yeah, not so. I mean, they come out focused, and they understand if they don't play well and hard, practice might add an extra hour to itself tomorrow. So I'm sure he put the fear in them before the game that he wants production and he wants efficiency regardless of the score. Illinois a perfect 5 and 0. They've got a big match on Tuesday against Maryland. Right now Chicago State in the crosshairs. 8 point lead, 10 point lead now for Illinois and we're going to have a foul. That's going to go against the Illini. You know, Chicago State, again, as I discussed earlier, 20 turnovers a game. Now, the reason is because their shots, they're not shooting the ball well, 41% from the field, but they're going to try to start to put their head down and get to the basket. And that's when turnovers start, and that should ignite the line eye fast break. That last foul was called on Brandon Paul. A couple of substitutions now for the Illini. Two points inside. First two for Quincy. Ukagwu on the floor now for Illinois. Tracy Abrams, number 13, he's got the ball up high. Playing keep away with Joseph Bertrand, who's really earned some playing time early in this year with good play. Long jumper spins out by Paul, trying to grab the one-handed rebound. Nana Egwu can't corral it. Active zone from Chicago State, though. They're enjoying the opportunity to play big time, and they come focused. Step in three ball. Our Darius Simmons, his first three points. So five unanswered for Chicago State. Good movement of the basketball. You still have to be conscious of doing just what Griffey just did. Take the ball strong to the bucket and try to get some interior opportunities and not rely on the three point shot. The turn and face right there allows him to figure out which way he can go to get the best angle, and he did an excellent job. So a chance for the three-point play for Tyler Griffey. Look at the numbers. Seven points per game, six rebounds. Much needed because of all the size and inside scoring missing from a year mm -hmm. ago with Illinois. So the pressure is on Griffey and, and Leonard, no doubt about it. I mean, Big Ten's a physical league, as they well know, and they're going to be counted on heavily. D.J. Richardson back on the floor for Illinois. Brandon Paul gets his first breather. Fisher stumbling. Hits the deck, and we're going to have a foul called against Illinois. It's going to be on Tyler Griffey. It's obvious Tracy Bildy is employing his team to push toward the basket, not rely on three-point shots. See if you can get an opportunity to get to the free throw line. And it's going to be a travel called on Yukagwi. Second turnover for Chicago State. Eddie, you're familiar with Chicago State. You used to play there in 
summers growing up in Chicago. Oh yeah, they had a tremendous summer league there, and that's why I learned how to play the game against top-notch players. And so I understand the history of Chicago State. Uh, they have definitely over the years tried to put themselves in a competitive situation. They have a nice arena now that they play in, and it's all about schedule. It's about scheduling teams, knowing that you're going to get beat, but getting experience, having an opportunity to allow recruits, potential recruits, to see you play in these teams, and gives you the opportunity to improve your program. Fisher's jumper, a little bit short. Last touched by the Cougars, back over to Illinois. You know, Abrams, I talked to Bruce Weber before the game, and, and Abrams is a guy that probably would still be in the starting lineup if it was not for injury. I mean, he's really struggled with a toe that's bothered him and, and other injuries as well, but they really like him as a, as a starting point guard, but Manikowsko has stepped in and done a tremendous job. Yeah, I was asking the people here at Illinois what's wrong with Abrams, and they said a little bit of everything. He's all banged up and bruised. It's a different brand of basketball. You play with a Big Ten uniform on, and uh, you're going to get banged and hit just in practice. Well, welcome to the Big Ten. I mean, I showed up as a freshman, 185 pounds, and <laughs> played about eight minutes a game because I couldn't stand upright. I kept getting knocked down. I had to put some weight on me. <laughs> this is Abrams up high. Richardson looking. Shot clock down to five. Abrams has to fire. Hits the back heel. Loose on the floor. And it's going to be Chicago State basketball. Chicago State out of the Great West Conference. Great West Conference is the only Division I conference that does not have an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. So starting 0-5 doesn't help your at-large bid, huh? Uh-uh. <laughs> Shot is missed by Simmons. One and done. Rebounded by Egwu. Bertrand hesitates. Gets in the lane. Score the goal. And the foul. That's nice. He took advantage of an unbalanced defensive floor for Chicago State. Pushing the basketball up. And he seized his opportunity with a tremendous ball fake that allowed him to get to the rim. Eddie, you talk about seizing an opportunity. Joseph Bertrand just, just that earlier in this season, Crandall Head, highly thought of player out of Chicago, ineligible to play the first couple of games. Bruce Weber decided to keep him out, and during that timeout, Joseph Bertrand was the guy who replaced him. Bertrand really played well and has earned the playing time over Crandall Head now, who is back in good standing, but just no longer in the rotation. Well, and that's a message to young players, regardless of your standing and where you fit in with that team. If you let down, you have someone waiting to seize the opportunity, and he did. Well, Illinois seizing the opportunity early. They have an 11 point lead on Chicago State. 11.58 to play. We'll be back to Champaign in a moment. Sometimes a hint is all the wrapping a gift needs. Is that what I think it is? The Lexus December to Remember sales event is here, but only for a limited time. See your Lexus dealer for exclusive lease offers on the 2012 IS250. Oh no, you've got to be kidding me! Where are you going? store. I think I got a virus and who knows what might happen. There's a faster way online. PCmatic.com. PCmatic.com? PCmatic is a free download that will take care of viruses and a lot more. That's PCmatic.com. Oh, look here. PCmatic found a nasty virus. PCmatic also thinks your computer is slow and probably freezing, right? It's slow and I restart it about once a week. PCmatic will fix it all with the click of a button. This is a lot faster. And the virus is gone. Online video should be faster too. PCmatic also boosted your internet speed. Can PCmatic keep my computer running this way? PCmatic runs automatically and sends a report to your inbox. Great. Thanks, honey. You saved me a trip to the store. <laughs> I needed the car anyway. Girls' night out. Honey? Go to PCmatic.com today for your free download. That's PCmatic.com. PCN2Go.com. A BTN men's basketball is brought to you in part by State Farm for auto, home, life, and banking. Get to a better state. Peak antifreeze. When you peak, you win. And by Culligan. 
Better water, pure and simple. Welcome back, everyone. Champagne, and it's not too early to hand out some honors. How about Tyler Griffey? Already eight points. He's our Culligan, pure and simple difference maker. Well, you know, he's taking advantage of an opportunity knowing that this is not a big time game. He's not scoring a lot of points this year. So here's that chance to show Coach Weber. You need to throw me the ball a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me five, a few more opportunities. Five shots in eight minutes. Last year, five shots was usually about uh, two weeks worth. Griffey on the bench, Myers Leonard back on. Mike Shaw also on the floor for Illinois. DJ Richardson, Joseph Bertrand, and Tracy Abrams. Those are the five in white for the Illini. Clark Rosenberg has checked in for Chicago State. He's number 35 with the ball. Rosenberg gets into trouble. Throws up a shot. Finally corralled by Leonard. That's a man's rebound. And Leonard should corral a lot of those rebounds against a small unit from Chicago State. Tough pass. And Leonard can't corral it, stepped on the end line. So it's going to be Cougar basketball. But you know, 6 11, 7 feet. Throw it in the air. <laughs> Put it up by the rim. It's on him to go get it. Line I showing a little bit of pressure. Matt Samuels is going to be pestered by Abrams as he brings it across the timeline. Rosenberg looking for the dump down. Nothing there. That's a tough matchup. With Rosenberg trying to get position on the 7 1 Myers Leonard. Contested three ball is good. Aaron Williams, his first three points. Yeah, they came in shooting about 29% from three. And so their confidence is starting to elevate, knocking down a couple. Eddie, what do you read into this? I know it's early in the season, but the Fighting Illini are actually letting opponents shoot better from three than they are in just regular field goal attempts. Well, yeah, and what it's, what it's saying is, you know, obviously defensively they're collapsing a little bit. They're trying to keep people out of the paint. But also, in the same instance, you got to be able to rotate out quickly and get a hand up. I watched you know, the Wisconsin game last night against BYU, and Wisconsin is probably one of the best in the country at recovering to the, to the exterior to put a hand up on shooters, and Illinois has to get better at it. Tracy Dilda is going to go to his bench as Matt Samuels called for palming the basketball. Substitutions for Illinois. Brandon Paul replacing Joseph Bertrand. Crandall Head is going to check in as well. His first game time, Sam Maniscalco, is going to run the point. This is Maniscalco. Quickly over to Crandall Head. Shaw to Leonard. Pass again, too hot to handle. Cougars on the run out. Rosenberg. And it's going to stay with Chicago State. And Chicago State employing a 1 2 2 3 quarter trap that has bothered Illinois a little bit. And you got to you got to really take care of that because you have teams, especially the next two opponents that say oh, they struggled against that 1 2 2. <laughs> we might as well try that as well. Next two games for Illinois at Maryland and against Gonzaga. Poke out Myers Leonard is fouled. 7-1 guy ahead of the pack tried for the reverse after losing the handle. He'll have two free throws. Well, if you're the Illinois coaching staff, you have to like the fact that your big guy is playing the passing lane. That he's actually overplaying the next pass. You don't see too many big guys that can do that or have the ability to even do it. Yeah, they always talk about the athletic ability of Leonard. One of the things he does well is shoot free throws. He's seven feet, one inch tall. And he is now 19 for 23 at the free throw line on the year. Well, that's going to help him. It's going to help him uh, the rest of his career here and at the next level getting that opportunity because the bottom of the line is you got to put it in the bucket. And if you're a big guy and you can shoot a high percentage from the free throw line, it's going to help your resume. Just saw that nice touch, rim glass rimming in for Leonard. Rosenberg attacks. Oh! Didn't expect that. Oh. Clark Rosenberg, 6-3, dunking on Leonard. Leonard got a poster. I don't know if he thought the poster would be him looking at the ball going to net, but he got posterized on that one. 
Uh, we may have the play of the day early, and it's from a, a true freshman from Evanston, Illinois. 6-3, dunking the ball in traffic. Shaw inside, shuffle the shoes. It's going to be a travel. Look, Miles Leonard is sizing him up. He said, okay, come in here, young fella. Come on, Miles. Well, that Miles turned into a giraffe. <laughs> he went right over the top of him. Myers Leonard, obviously a great shot blocker, currently first in the Big Ten in rejections, but surprised when the little guy got up and after it. Crandall Head going to be called for the personal foul. These are important minutes for Crandall Head. Didn't play the last two games. Trying to get back into form after missing a couple of games. He's only played in one of the first five games that Illinois has had. Rosenberg in trouble on the floor. Did he get the timeout? He did. Chicago State, they have to be happy. I mean, you know, you're down 10, nine minutes to go in the half. I mean, they've been getting blown out. You know, you expect them to come in against Illinois, riding high, big tournament win down in Cancun. And the line as I suspect it could happen, they've come out a little flat defensively, uh, not offensively. They're getting their looks, they're doing some things, but defensively they're flat. Well, next on BTN, it's a women's basketball doubleheader as Northwestern hosts DePaul. That game will be at Evanston. Then it's LSU taking on Ohio State. Coverage starts right after our game on BTN. Don't forget, a quadruple header of basketball finishing off this evening. Butler and in Indiana. That one's later on this evening. Quick shot after the timeout is missed. And it's going to be back to Illinois. Matt Samuels misses the jumper, and he's quickly replaced by Ardarius Simmons. They've extended this 1-2-2 two, two a little bit, and, and good passing up the court, keeping the ball movement will find a good opportunity for the lineup. Maniscalco free along the baseline. He's not going to miss that too many times this year. Eight points now for the graduate student from Chicago. And against the zone, if you can go from strong to weak a couple of times, you're eventually going to find that opening. Maniscalco has played five games in his Illini career. He has not shot below 50% in any of them. Just a consistent offensive player. Experience and understanding, you know, what, what's expected of him. And also knowing he didn't start the season as a starter. So that tells him that Abrams is sitting there waiting. And so his focus is going to be top notch. Body's flying. Mike Shaw falls down, now gets back up. Simmons, hop, skip, and a jump. Gets it back out to Rosenberg. Shot clock down to seven. Rosenberg inside has it stripped away. It'll stay with the Cougars. Only four ticks left on the shot clock. Another substitution for Chicago State. Aaron Williams comes back in. Loose on the floor. Crandall Head picks it up. This is Mike Henry. He's checked into the game. And Henry, who hadn't played in a while, hits his first shot. My kind of guy. You know, he, he, <laughs> hey, look, if they, if they put you in the game, you come in and shoot it. No? You know, if you warmed up already before the game. You got to come in and let it go. <laughs> Mike Henry played the first game of the year for Illinois, then set up the next four because of an ankle problem. He's been on the floor for maybe five seconds. He's open along the baseline and fires it in. Hey, look, he's got to send the message right away. He knows those minutes aren't going to be plentiful. So, hey, I'm going to make my showing quickly. And, hey, he got a good opportunity. Ran the floor. Teammate found him. Why not? Mike Henry, like you, Eddie Johnson, Chicago guy played in the public league. He went to Orr High School. He's a guy with a nice little jump shot, obviously. Yeah, and uh, if he keeps shooting it like that, he's going to find himself working toward the rotation. And Bruce Weber talked about that before the game with me. He said, you know, when, when uh, Abrams went down with the injury, Maniscalco has made it tough for him to put him back in the lineup because he's shown him some things. And, that's the opportunity you have to seize if you're Henry. 
Ed, you played in the Big Ten. Is it possible as a young player to learn by watching, or do you have to learn by actually getting out there and playing? Well, it's both. I mean, no doubt about it, you're going to learn in practice. You're going to learn by watching uh, because this league is very difficult in terms of the physical presence of it. That's one battle, and then understanding what your team is doing is another one, and Bruce Weber's a great coach at getting it done. Time out on the floor. Back to Champagne in a moment. I think leadership starts with the desire to, to sacrifice yourself to get a community of people to do the right things. At the University of Illinois, we saw professors, we saw guest speakers, we saw researchers and others who were doing many of the right things that helped to focus us on how we conduct our lives. And, and to me, that's essential. Let's finish this the way we started. Together! Available on Dish Cinema. There aren't many things better than that feeling of walking into your new home for the first time. It's like no other feeling in the world. At Dish Network, we understand. So when you move with our Dish Mover program, you can be set up the day you move in. Dish Mover is free, and when you call, you can get a free DVR. We'll help you get started on that new life of yours. Dish Mover from Dish Network. Welcome home. Stephanie Stern on BTN. Breaking the zone is all about movement. Here's the pass from Maniscalco. You watch him cut to the corner. Pays dividends every time. You move without the basketball. You get to a spot. Good rotation of the ball. Bam. So far early in this game, Illinois, they had made four out of ten three-pointers. Breaking the press, ball loose on the floor. Chicago State has it, and they're going to be tied up. Possession arrow is going to give it to the Cougars. Eagle, got to catch it before you dunk it. <laughs> you know, that's, and you know, you got it for a big guy, that's the last thing that they grab is the hand-eye coordination. And as a young player, he's got to get better at it because he has the size. And then Agwu, along with Ibby Jim Day, kind of learning on the fly. Both guys raw post players, but with big time ceilings. Guys who can be real forces just because of their bodies and athletic ability. Hard they work will pay off. No doubt about it. Yari Nelson in trouble along the baseline, just bounces it off of Egwu's thigh. Chicago State really not running an offense. You know, a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, trying to figure it out, trying to get things done. But again, you have to credit the superiority of the Illini in terms of their defensive principles causing a lot of problems. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Just in off the bench, Matt Samuels switches the jumper. Five points now for Samuels. He is out of Washington, D.C. Began his college career playing in the Summit League. Oakland University Golden Grizzlies. A bunch of these guys from Chicago State are transferred from other Division I programs. Tracy Dilley just taken over this program two years ago, trying to get some veteran players to represent his team before he can get the young four-year players in the mix. Yeah, I mean, that's key. I mean, you've you got to have leadership from extended from the coach. And he can only talk and do so much. And to be able to have guys that's a little bit older really helps. Tough jumper, Maniscalco misses from three. And it'll go out of bounds, last touched by Brandon Paul. Now, Tracy Dildy, if you mention his name in uh, Chicago, he is considered basketball royalty. Tracy Dildy comes from a 
family of brothers who all were great basketball players. Tracy played at Martin Luther King back in the early 80s. I had plenty of battles against that school. Martin Luther King at the time when Tracy was there was led by Ephraim Winners. Illini fans remember Ephraim. McDonald's All-American played for Lou Henson here. Jump shot missed, one and done. Maniscalco, the rebound. In and out, this time Mike Henry can't hit the jumper. Now Tracy Dildy, one of the reasons why he thinks he could be successful at Chicago State is his Chicago ties. Mm -hmm. He was an assistant both at UIC and at DePaul, played point guard for the Flames at UIC. Also spent time at Ball State, an assistant at Auburn, an assistant at Ole Miss. He's been all over. And every time when he's an assistant, one of the assumptions is he's got that pipeline in Chicago. He can bring good Chicago players to wherever he goes. Well, and the pipeline is important. And, you know, he was an assistant coach at DePaul, and he understands the history there. DePaul, for a number of years, had that pipeline. It started with Mark Aguirre, Skip Dillard, Bernard Randolph, who were actually teammates of mine at Western House High School, Terry Cummings, uh, Teddy Grubbs. So he understands that it can be done in Chicago, and he's competing now against DePaul, Loyola, UIC as well, and it's going to be a challenge, but he has an opportunity. DJ Richardson back in, replacing Brandon Paul. And here comes Chicago State. They break the pressure easily. Pull up jumper Samuel. Knocks it in. That's our Darius Simmons. Seven points now for Simmons. Abrams, Richardson, Egwu, Bertrand, and Henry, the five on the floor. Bertrand hangs in the air and dips it in. That's a nice move. And you know, he worked his way in. He, he gave the passer an angle to get the ball to him, but he worked his way into the mid-range area, not relying on a three-point shot. Bertrand made his name as a slam dunk champion, but he can also do some work below the rim, rocking the cradle and putting the layup in. Well, it's all about high percentage and being effective and putting yourself in a situation where you know you can be productive. He could have stayed out the three-point line, had an open opportunity, but said, no, I want to get to the bucket, and he did it. Simmons working on Abrams. Fisher's left-handed. Over to Samuel. Shot clock down to five. Kirby's going to have to hurry. Williams bailed out. He got grabbed on his way to the paint. Mike Henry, the young freshman from Chicago, called for the personal foul. Anytime the shot clock is running down, and if you're the defensive team, you have to look to the other end. I don't know if Henry knew where the clock was. He probably wouldn't have been as aggressive and, and probably forced a tough shot. And a bad entry pass. Aaron Williams simply throws it away. Well, they, they give it up about 21 times, so <laughs> they're on cue. So I didn't want to go further than that. You said when you're playing defense, you actually do have to sneak a peek. You sneak the, a peek uh, at the other end, you know, not, not at the shot clock, just to figure out, okay, what type of defense you have to play. I mean, is he going to get real aggressive? Clock's going down. Do I just want to? You got to give him something, okay? Because most players can get a shot off. You just have to be smart, knowing it's going to be a tough shot. Abrams. Richardson. He can shoot that ball. I mean, he shot it well, and Cancun got MVP honors in the tournament, and he is showing that you leave him open, he's going to make it pay. Quick move inside, and Quincy Ukagwi is fouled. You know, Chicago State players, they seem to be having fun, and, and that's half the battle for Tracy Dildy is to put them in an environment, even though he knows that they're going to have a losing season probably, they're on five now, but you want some happiness. You want them to feel good about playing. Having an opportunity to play Illinois and Champaign is one of those opportunities there. Uh, being able to travel, they go to Illinois State next. I mean, these are the things that's going to help him grow his program, and, and I just see his players having a good time, trying to play hard, trying to execute what he's trying to get them to do. Couple of free throws missed, but an offensive rebound by Nelson. Extra possession 
for Chicago State. Whistle and it's going to go against Chicago State. A legal screen set. Yeah, a legal screen, but you know what? That's fine. I mean, at least he's trying to set a screen. I haven't seen many. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Illinois basketball up by 18. Closing in on the four minute mark here in the first half. With Eddie Johnson, I'm Eric Collins. Illinois trying to get to 6 and 0 on the year. They just came back from Cancun as winners. Cancun Challenge. Nana Egwu hits the jumper. Nice to see the big fella step out. That's a nice stroke there, though. I mean, he raised up right in that little mid range against the zone where you need to be. Egwu listed 6'11, 245. That's a, a body cut from central casting if you're talking about Big Ten prototype. Henry with the rip away. What does he have? Oh, blocked from behind and a nasty spill. It's going to be a foul on Aaron Williams. And Henry is down. Well, to be honest with you, it was a good defensive play. Henry put himself in a tough situation, and he paid the dividend, something we can talk about after. But the breakaway here, use the left hand, young fella. If you're not going to go dunk strong, use the left hand. The University of I would like to... Watch Big Ten football right on your phone with Verizon Video and get enhanced video quality through the speed and power of Verizon's 4G LTE network. Only from Verizon. Now through this Monday only, get the Pantech Breakout for $49.99. The free LG Enlightened. Or a free Xperia Play by Sony Ericsson. The smartphones are ready, the tablets are wrapped. Now through Monday only, get the technology they love on the network they deserve. Verizon. With passion and intensity, the Big Ten's fiercest competitors leave it all on the floor every time they take the court. Be there for every thrilling matchup all season long. Big Ten Women's Hoops, only on BTN. So, when is this stud muffin of yours coming over? Any sec. OMG, Dad, you are not meeting him looking like that. I look fine. Just a little trouble with the Bargain Brand cooking spray. Quick, hide yourself behind the butter. Do I embarrass you? Yeah, I told you like a gajillion times to use new and improved Pam so you'd come out in one piece, like those muffins up there. Look, I gotta go. Have fun, Cupcake. I will totally die if you call me that in public ever again. Hmm. Pam helps you, like, pull it off. Even better. Guaranteed. The Big Ten Bulls, tomorrow and Friday on BTN. Folks, be sure to stay tuned at the half for our State Farm Halftime Report with Mike Hall and Tim Doyle. We'll break down our first half, and they'll also highlights of Michigan State and Eastern Michigan. That's coming your way in three minutes and 43 seconds of game time. With Eddie Johnson, former Illini great, I'm Eric Collins. Gonna have a couple of free throws here for Mike Henry. Henry had a breakaway, tried to get himself a two-handed dunk, and didn't realize he had company. Yeah, he had some company coming full speed and you just have to be careful in those opportunities because you're taught as a defender not to give up on the play and if you get a good angle you're going to go for it. And that's why the left hand comes into play. You know you got to read it and not just take for granted the guy's going to let you go up and attempt a dunk. It's not normally going to happen. The left hand would have probably got him a three point play. Instead he took a hard foul and only two free throws and unfortunately missed one. Henry splits his first two collegiate free throws. There'll be more to come. He's a promising youngster. Fisher, good catch inside. Spins, uses that left hand. Two-handed wow. tap, missed. Wow. And it's going to be <laughs> Illinois basketball. 
<laughs> he's a pogo stick. <laughs> about it. I mean, he's jumping everywhere. So it's like a trampoline. Now I played it. I don't remember a trampoline on this floor. <laughs> this guy's jumping up like he's halftime entertainment. Lee Fisher picks up his third personal foul. Let's see if Tracy Dilly brings him to the bench. Tracy Looks like Fisher is kind of ambling over to the bench. Matt to wait for a, between these free throws for Tracy Abrams. Abrams a perfect three for three on the year at the line. Four for four and now Fisher will go to the bench with those three fouls replaced by De'Ari Nelson. So one left hander replaced by another left hander. You know Abrams starting to figure out that you know you got to learn to play with a little pain and I think for any young player that's an adjustment and that's a growth period where you have some some pain and, and whatnot and things aren't going to be the same when you come back and you know he started the first few games and probably thought that he'd be right back in the lineup but it just doesn't work that way. Robinson misses high off the window rebounded by Henry. Henry's listed at 6-5, but he plays a little bit bigger than that. Inside turnaround, first shot of the game. Ibby Jim Day into the game. And it's going to be Illinois basketball. Jim Day along with Nana Egwu, a big body, learning how to play at this level. Yeah, and, and Ibe, I'll just say his first name until I can really get his last. <laughs> Posted up very well. I mean, he ran the court and he dug in right in the middle of the paint and almost got an opportunity to get a layup. Jim Day getting a scholarship at the last minute last spring when Jeremy Richmond decided to go pro. And Bruce Weber happy to have him. He is uh, kind of a blank slate. Baseline jumper missed. Crandall head keeps it alive and ball hits the end line. I'm seeing some athleticism from the Alana. You know, and that's something I didn't get a chance to see. I didn't see a lot of these guys playing good minutes in Cancun. But I'm going to tell you, they, they can get up and they're very active around the offensive glass, which is going to be important for this team because they do play small. And so a lot of guys are going to be counted on to rebound the basketball. Illinois right now five guys on the floor that did not start the game. So Bruce Weber substituting liberally here in this first half. Rosenberg keeps his dribble alive. Now runs into trouble. He's surrounded by three guys. Gets it back and puts it home. Yeah, he got it up and in. But I mean, that's a lot of dribbling, a lot of maneuvering to get that bucket, and you can be wore down quickly. Again, as I stated, Chicago State really not running their offense, and I know they have one, but they've gotten out of it. Normally, that's what happens when you get down by this much so early in the game. Turnover gives it back over to Chicago State. Jeremy Robinson back into the game. These 40 first half points for Illinois, the most first half points they've scored so far this year. You know, 158 to go is just important for the line just to close it out strong and for Chicago State they just like to just dig in a little bit more and maybe give themselves a reason running off the floor here at halftime. Tough pass inside picked up by Nelson surrounded and gives it up. 11 turnovers now for Chicago State. Henry thought about it. And Jim Day really wants it. See what he's got. He still wants it. <laughs> Shot clock down to nine. Abrams hangs in the air. Bounces it in. Well, you know, I can see why the coaching staff loves him. He's under control. You know, he seems to be extremely heady, not forcing much. And then defensively, he picks his guy up three quarter court. And Bruce Weber calls him a junkyard dog. Sometimes not pretty, but he'll just give you everything he's got. State Farm halftime report coming up. We're under a minute left to play here in our first half. Robinson's been fairly quiet. Shot clock down to five. Nothing called. Samuels wanted a whistle, didn't get it. Hanging in the air. 
Jim Day has it ripped away. Henry cleans up the miss. Yeah, Henry's just acting. Yeah, he's running the floor. He's just getting himself in position. A solid effort here for Henry in the first half. And Henry making up for lost time. Played in the first game of the year. Didn't play for the next four with that ankle injury. Robinson, high jumper, misses the mark. One last chance for Crandall Head. Races down the floor, and before the shot called for the travel. Yeah, probably should have put thrown the ball up to Abrams, and that's the one thing Head will learn. Always give it to your point guard when he's in front of you because you're going to be in front of him more than he in front of you. <laughs> That's going to do it for our first 20 minutes of play here at Assembly Hall in Champaign. Sam Mattis, Calco, Crandall Head, Myers Leonard, and the rest of the Fighting Illini off to a good start. They lead 44 to 19 over Chicago State. We now send you to our Chicago studios for a State Farm halftime report with Mike Hall and Tim Doyle. Eric, thank you very much. This is the State Farm Halftime Report. Mike and Tim here, fresh off the Cancun Challenge Championship. The Illini are just 20 minutes away from improving to 6-0 and on the season. From what you've seen in this first half and what you've seen through the first five games, what kind of a team is this that Bruce Weber has? I think it's a team he likes because they're very gritty and tough. They may not be as talented as last year's team, but this is the type of team he wants to coach. And their unselfish play in the first half, Mike, has really stood out to me. There's been great ball movement against the winless Chicago State team. And there hasn't been much of a hangover coming back from Cancun, which sometimes there could be. Look how they moved the ball here to Maniscalco. In the next play, I love what Myers Leonard can do in the post. Watch him skip the ball across the court, wide open. E.J. Richardson, he finishes. They have 10 10 assists on 14 field goals. And like I said, this is a team that has the ability to maybe sneak up on some. You know, they're projecting in the conference, maybe mid-pack. Really, four through ten is anyone's ball game. And the way they're guarding people right now, not one opponent has scored over 27 points in the first half against them. Yeah. So their defense has been ultra impressive. Now, how about Myers Leonard? You brought him up. Stud. He's got, with four points Guy's in the awesome. first half, he's got 67 points total this year. He had 68 all of last season. Obviously, he's getting a lot more opportunities, but he's taking advantage of them. Oh, and scouts are absolutely drooling over this guy. He has completely changed his body, and I think going up against Davis and Tisdale last year was really good for him day in and day out in practice. He's so athletic, and the thing that impressed me most, the kid knows how to play. You see the passing in that video right there. From one strong fella to another, we're going to check in on Adrian Payne and the Michigan State Spartans. When we come back from this commercial break, they are the other afternoon game going on in the Big Ten as they are on the road for their first true road test of the season against Eastern Michigan. Highlights from that one right after this. Oh, we miss you, honey. Well, I'll be home soon. Until then, I have my wingman helping me out. Tommy? I helped Dad pick it up. It's beautiful. Behind every open heart is a story. Tell yours with my open heart collection at K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. There are millions of reasons to give one, but the message is always the same. Keep your heart open, and love will always find its way in. I love you. I love you too. Every kiss begins with K. I think I got a virus, and who knows what might happen. There's a faster way online, PCmatic.com. PCmatic.com? PCmatic is a free download that will take care of viruses and a lot more. That's PCmatic.com. Oh, look here. PCmatic found a nasty virus. PCmatic also thinks your computer is slow and probably freezing, right? It's slow, and I restart it about once a week. PCmatic will fix it all with the click of a button. This is a lot faster. And the virus is gone. Online video should be faster too. PCmatic also boosted your internet speed. 
Can PCMatic keep my computer running this way? PCMatic runs automatically and sends a report to your inbox. Great. Thanks, honey. You saved me a trip to the store. <laughs> I needed the car anyway. Girls night out. Honey? Go to PCMatic.com today for your free download. That's PCMatic.com. Stern, only on BTN. State Farm Halftime Report continues. We promised Michigan State highlights. Here's Adrian Payne taking on Eastern Michigan. Missing, finishing again. Right near the end of half, more from Payne. He's just so long and athletic, and when he gets the ball that close to the rim, <laughs> tough to miss. Draymond Green, the leader of the Spartan squad, has himself another double-double in points and boards. Oh, that's so acrobatic, the dancing bear is. And then more from Adrian Payne. Long, lanky, strong. This one's pretty easy for the Spartans. It's a 65 to 37 game closing minutes of the second half there and for Michigan State talk to me big picture they came in three and two in this game but those two losses are against Duke and UNC two of the six best teams in the country what should we take of them see they're not as good as those teams but I, they're not as bad as maybe other people are projecting them. A lot of people don't have them making the tournament this year. I think they are a tournament team. I think Draymond Green is a great college player. But at six foot seven, he has struggled against taller teams like Duke and the, uh, the Plum Plumley Twins and North Carolina with Henson down low. He has a tough time scoring against taller guys. He's a great player. He knows how to play. But their biggest adjustment has been Keith Appling. Mm -hmm. He's gone from shooting guard to point guard, and that adjustment has not been too smooth. He kind of has a scores mentality. If he picks up when to score, when to be a point guard, Michigan State's going to be very good just because they believe in themselves. Every year, Tom Izzo puts out a winning program, so he gives these guys a belief that they're going to get it done in the end. And he always schedules hard. The beginning of the season is always tough for Tom Izzo. He used yep. this sort of as a building block. And, and you mentioned the point guard thing. That's interesting because turnovers have been a big problem for Michigan State, averaging 17 a game. They've already got 15 in this game. Sam Maniscalco trying to cut down the turnovers for the Illini. He's in charge, and he can score two. 44 to 19 Illini. Second half keys after this. Even the highest efficiency dishwasher can't remove spots from your glasses if you have hard water. But a Culligan High Efficiency Water Softener can. The Culligan High Efficiency saves you up to 46% in operating costs, and it makes your glasses look 100% beautiful. Saturday, December 3rd. Experience the first ever Big Ten Fan Fest presented by Dr. Pepper. 200,000 square feet of indoor fun at the Indiana Convention Center. Fans with game tickets get in for free. Ticket information available at Big10.org. Culligan has a wide range of bottle-free drinking water options for your home or office for just three cents a glass. There are no bottles to lift, and you never run out of bottled quality water. Right now, you can rent your choice for $10 a month for the first three months. Culligan, better water, pure and simple. So you want to work for me? What makes you so special? Well... Oh! Illinois grad. Oh no, you've got to be kidding me! Where are you going? store. I think I got a virus and who knows what might happen. There's a faster way online. PCmatic.com. PCmatic.com? PCmatic is a free download that will take care of viruses and a lot more. That's PCmatic.com. Oh, look here. PCmatic found a nasty virus. PCmatic also thinks your computer is slow and probably freezing, right? It's slow and I restart it about once a week. PCmatic will fix it all with the click of a button. This is a lot faster. And the virus is gone. Online video should be faster, too. PCmatic also boosted your internet speed. Can PCmatic keep my computer running this way? PCmatic runs automatically and sends a report to your inbox. Great. Thanks, honey. You saved me a trip to the store. <laughs> I needed the car anyway. Girls' night out. Honey? Go to PCmatic.com today for your free download. That's PCmatic.com. DS.
25 point lead for the Fighting Illini at the break. What do you need to see in the second half? I think Bruce Weber probably took a page out of Mortal Kombat. What do they say there? Finish him. Yeah, you got to put the pedal to the metal in the first five minutes. Put this game out of the woods. Eric and Eddie have your second half call right after this. You're watching basketball on VTN. Yeah, I'm married. Doesn't matter. You do that for me? Really? Yeah, I'd like that. Who are you talking to? Uh, it's Jake from State Farm. Sounds like a really good deal. Jake from State Farm at 3 in the morning? Who is this? It's, it's Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis. She sounds hideous. Well, she's a guy, so... Another reason more people stay with State Farm. Get to a better state. One more gift. If you're giving an amazing gift, shouldn't it be given in an amazing way? <laughs> the Lexus December to Remember sales event is here, but only for a limited time. See your Lexus dealer for exclusive lease offers on the 2012 ES350 and as- Oh no, you've gotta be kidding me! Where are you going? The store. I think I got a virus and who knows what might happen. There's a faster way online. PCmatic.com. PCmatic.com? PCmatic is a free download that will take care of viruses and a lot more. That's PCmatic.com. Oh, look here. PCmatic found a nasty virus. PCmatic also thinks your computer is slow and probably freezing, right? It's slow and I restarted about once a week. PCmatic will fix it all with the click of a button. This is a lot faster. And the virus is gone. Online video should be faster, too. PCmatic also boosted your internet speed. Can PCmatic keep my computer running this way? PCmatic runs automatically and sends a report to your inbox. Great. Thanks, honey. You saved me a trip to the store. <laughs> I needed the car anyway. Girls night out. Honey? Go to PCmatic.com today for your free download. That's PCmatic.com. PCmatic.com. Five and zero in the season for a reason. A good offensive start today in Champaign. They have 15 field goals. Ten of them have come on assists. So good team basketball. But Chicago State, the Cougars, with some highlights of their own. A couple of thunderous dunks to go with some three pointers made. But in the end, through 20 minutes, just too much DJ Richardson and the Illini. We'll take one more quick timeout. When we come back, Chicago State will hope for a quick change to try and get back in this one. trust the makers of peak antifreeze to protect their 600 ton ore haulers from extreme conditions you can trust peak antifreeze's unique formula to help protect your engine from costly repairs peak antifreeze protect your ride no matter what you drive peak antifreeze when you peak you win Football is about teamwork, being able to pick up the person next to you when they are down. My parents flew in for a game, and afterwards my mom collapsed from a brain aneurysm. My teammates rallied around me and my family. Coach Zook and his wife would visit my mom in the hospital. After a month, she was finally able to go home. I'll never forget that experience, how my team was there for me when I needed them most. Final buzzer sounds. Our analysis begins. The finale presented by Reese's. Highlights, insight, and all the post-game chatter. The finale presented by Reese's. Tonight at 9 Eastern on BTN. Relive the best games of the week, snap to snap, all in one hour, with bonus content that takes you inside what happened on the field. 
Big Ten Football in 60, presented by Quicken Loans, Tuesday at 7.30 Eastern on BTN. Somewhat of a mystery team this year in the Big Ten. 5-0 and start, trying to get to 6-0. and Bruce Weber just trying to figure out what type of team he has. And so far, so good. Eddie Johnson through the first 20 minutes. His team's playing fairly well. Well, focus is important, understanding that they felt they had a great chance to win this game today. But it's all about building to the next game. And I thought they did a great job. Yeah, Illinois already with a season high in terms of first half points. They did it by shooting the basketball pretty well. Well, against the zone, you just want to move the ball. Move from strong to weak, you're going to get the good look. And the Illini did that. They were very unselfish with the basketball, and they found the open teammates. And to soften the zone, you have to knock down some long-range bombs, and they got it done. Let's take a look at our first half stats presented by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. And anything jump off the page yet, Eddie? Well, you know, I, I thought the bench scoring for the line I stood out, even though that's not showing here. I thought that was huge. And then not turning the basketball over, taking care of the ball, knowing that they, if they get enough field goal attempts, they were going to run away with this game. And those are the two things that I would worry about if I'm Bruce Weber coming into this ball game. Let's take a look at today's Reese's perfect combination, and it's uh, that's a junior and a senior, Tyler Griffey and Sam Maniscalco with the bulk of the offense for Illinois. And, and those two guys are going to be highly counted on. And, and so they have been producing. They, they're not letting down. They're understanding that, you know, they're going to be needed for this ball club. And uh, Leonard especially, very aggressive inside, knowing that the, the physicality of the Big Ten is going to put him in that position where he's going to be counted on, not just offensively, but defensively as well. Illinois is going to start this second half the same way that began the first half. Brandon Paul, Tyler Griffey, Sam Maniscalco. Myers Leonard and DJ Richardson on the floor. One, Illinois a perfect 9 and 0 over the years against the Cougars of Chicago State. Chicago. Wondering Chicago State located on the south side of Chicago. 95th and South Martin Luther King Drive is where you can find it. First shot of the second half missed by Brandon Ball. Run down by Maniscalco who throws it. An alley-oop a little bit too strong to Leonard. A little too strong but I like it. And Leonard gave him the signal to throw the ball up. Probably a little softer for Maniscalco to allow Leonard to just go up and make the play himself. Replacing Samuels. Cougars out of the Great West Conference led in the first half. By our Darius Simmons, seven points. Clark Rosenberg, four points off the bench. And Rosenberg is going to have the basketball here. It's playing time early in the second half. Tough pass to handle. It skips off the hands of Simmons. Yeah, and coming into the game, Robinson and Fisher, two leading scorers. They're only one of eight and two points, uh, three points among them. So that has to improve for Chicago State if they want to make a run. Line I passed the basketball very well in the first half, continuing to do so here on this possession. Richardson steps in now. He'll reset the offense again. Maniscalco, quick move. Leonard. It's a nice little jumper. Nice mid-range mid jump shot on the baseline, and for a big man, that is a huge weapon against the zone. Myers Leonard, a legitimate 7-1 with big-time athletic ability. Left-handed jumper, rattles in. That's Lee Fisher. He finally got one to go, and they're going to need more of that from him in the second half. DJ Richardson, another three ball. Nine points now for DJ. He's the guy, I'm sure Tracy Dildy identified and said, look, guys, we cannot allow him to catch the ball in rhythm against the zone. He's going to bury us. I had to make my uh, all-time team in terms of great outside shooters in Illinois history. DJ Richardson and my partner, Eddie Johnson, would be both on it. Oh, Myers Leonard! You saw it coming from a mile away! What a tremendous pass from Richardson. 
Richardson. Leonard did the easy thing. And look at that. They give it right back. Jeremy Robinson does a chin up for Chicago State. Tell you, Leonard is an athlete. Man, he ran the floor and finished Jordan. high and strong. Quick shot, Richardson. No. Rosenberg doesn't have numbers. And here in this first two and a half minutes of the second half, Myers Leonard has ripped an 18 footer and ran the floor like a gazelle. He and did. dunked it home. And you reward the big man. That's what you do. And, and Richardson being unselfish, he sees him trailing down the lane and he just raises up and puts on a show. Fisher got out of the way, too, I might add. <laughs> Riffy playing in and out with Brandon Paul. Richardson had his legs taken out from under him, wanted the call, didn't get it, misses the jumper. Lead is 28 for Illinois. Cougars with the basketball. Chicago State winless on the year. Illinois unbeaten. Fisher picks up the loose ball on the baseline. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Good move inside. Robinson finishes with the left hand. Yeah, they got one down, but I mean, again, health to skelter, a lot of dribbling, a lot of non movement offensively. Myers Leonard can't hit this one, falling to his right. Nice move, though. Another turnover. Line I want to run. Good one handed pass. Richardson to Griffey. And Richardson, the rebound in the tap in. Uh, Richardson has the game figured out. I mean, he is not a stat stuffer. He's not worried about his own statistics. He's just trying to make his teammates better, observing the situation and getting it done. Out of control shot. Robinson gets his own miss, and since he's sitting on his fanny, he calls timeout. timeout. We'll State. take the timeout with him. Folks, don't go anywhere. When we come back, we will check in with Mike Hall for an important update in the BTN studios. Don't go anywhere. I faced one of the toughest challenges of my life right here. I couldn't swim, but I can still hear my drill instructor today. Don't quit. So I jumped in, apprehensive and scared out of my mind. But I came up a Marine. The few, the proud, the Marines. I've worked construction most of my life. Miss out on my family, my kids growing up, missing out on their games. Going back to school and getting my education has definitely made me a type of role model. My kids see how important school is. You know, I don't even have to tell them anything. Their homework's done. They, they always trying to get the highest grade they can. Me and my brother both went to school at the same time. We graduated the same day. It was really nice for my family. You can't go wrong with education. It pays off in the end. The investment in my education has definitely been worth it. I don't miss out on my family, going to the movies with them now. You know, going to all their practices and games. Uh, now I feel like a, a provider for my family and, you know, I'm proud of what I do. We are educators helping people build a foundation for the rest of their lives. ITT Technical Institute, education for the future. To find out more, call 1-800-488-3652. I will not be able to come to University of Illinois without scholarships. I don't know that I would be who I am today without the experiences that I've had here. Somebody believes in you. Someone else thinks that what I'm doing is important. Having that support from donors is just amazing. I'm highly, highly appreciative of everything that they do. Thank you. It's just, thank you doesn't even cover it. Their help is needed and something that's very appreciated. Mike Hall here with breaking news from Champaign. Illinois Athletic Director Mike Thomas announced just minutes ago Ron Zook is out as the head football coach for the Fighting Illini. 
It was a seven year run for Ron Zook which included only two winning seasons and only one winning Big Ten record. The highlights did include the 2008 Rose Bowl berth and last year's bowl victory the first for the program since 1999. But of course this year started off well with a 6 and 0 beginning and yet an 0 and 6 ending. So once again Ron Zook out as head coach. We will have more on this on the finale tonight after our final basketball game Indiana and Butler. Eric. Mike thank you so much. Ron Zook a good man a good coach just ran into a real difficult situation this year 6 and 0 and finishing with six straight losses. Uh, well, so news here in Champaign timeout on the floor 1553 left to play Illinois the basketball team on top of Chicago State 53 27. Through this Monday only, get the Pantech Breakout for $49.99, the free LG Enlightenment, or a free Xperia Play by Sony Ericsson. The smartphones are ready, the tablets are wrapped. Now through Monday only, get the technology they love on the network they deserve. Verizon. Forces Foundation's mission is to support wounded and active duty service members and their families. Morale is vital to our troops, especially when recovering from combat injuries. A smile goes a long way, and the AFF's recreation programs boost morale for our troops and their families. Help America's heroes by serving those who serve. Please visit armedforcesfoundation.org to find out how you can make a difference. Top of Chicago State, 53-27. With Eddie Johnson, I'm Eric Collins. Illinois has shown uh, the tendency to run the ball up the floor. Yeah, and you know, and they're scoring off turnovers, and that's what we talked about in terms of a key. Chicago State had to take care of the basketball. They have not, and the line I have scored 20 points off of those turnovers, and that's been a huge difference. Illinois still with their starting five on the floor. Maniscalco, Richardson, Griffey, Leonard, and Brandon Paul. Turnovers doubled Chicago State, 16-8 for Illinois. 27 seconds on the shot clock. Ball out of bounds. It'll stay with the fighting Illini. You know, both coaches in teaching mode now. You know, making sure that their teams take care of business, don't get out of whack. Try to stay focused for Chicago State. Just compete, you know, try to build into a deficit. Oh, Leonard, he's hacked and makes the bucket. You know, that's all about being a big man, and if you're going to play in the interior in the paint, you've got to be a man. You've got to grow up quickly, and when you elevate around the rim, you have to go strong. And Miles Leonard showing the ability to not be afraid of getting hit inside and then the concentration to finish. And he switches the free throw. Myers Leonard did not convert that three point play a year ago. He has increased his strength and it is becoming evident that he's going to be a real big time player when conference season starts. Robinson dumped down. Fisher dunks it with two hands. We've seen a couple of dunks that have come out of nowhere today. Bodies flying. Brandon Paul is fouled. Well, you know, Fisher struggled all game long, but he's shown the ability to rise above the rim. He is a jumping jack, and Mr. Leonard got a payback there. 
But at least Leonard was a man about it. He stayed there. <laughs> You know, Fisher ran. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Leonard's going to contest everything, it appears. Last year he contested everything and frequently got fouls call on him. This year he's figuring his way out, being able to stay on the floor for longer stretches. Well, you know that's going to be huge, especially as this schedule starts to build up. You know, the next two games for the line are huge. If they want to work their way into the rankings and not just get votes for hanging around the bottom, they're going to have to do some really good playing in these next two games against Maryland and Gonzaga. Fisher misses the jumper, rebounded by Tracy Abrams. Brandon Paul trying to get going offensively. He's got just two points, Eddie. He's better than that. Shot along the baseline is missed by Egwu. Brandon Paul's a guy who everyone surrounding the fighting line are waiting for him to take that next step. He can be a really good player. And that next step is just to be aggressive when you get the opportunities. And you're right, especially today, really not focusing in on his offensive game, just willing to pass the ball around. Foul called on Nana Egbu, his first personal foul, and another substitution for Illinois. Brandon Paul will go to the bench, replaced by Joseph Bertrand. And trying to catch that entry pass, Lee Fisher fell to the ground. Good way to run the floor. Bertrand rewarded. Taps in the miss from D.J. Richardson. Normally the guy that passes the ball will probably reap the rewards at the end. And he was able to get the offensive rebound and finish. Illinois up by 29 on Chicago State. Egbu picks up his second foul in the last minute of game time. What are some of the things that a guy like Nana Egwu is going to be working on in practice and in games? I think footwork, obviously, balance. You know, for a big guy, you know, it's hard for them to be able to catch the ball and then keep their position, all those things, uh, and, and then play high, you know, not come down on, on shot block attempts, all those things that it's going to be needed for him to play consistent minutes. And it's a, it's a growth period, but obviously he has the body. I mean, you know, he's got the most important part down. Now it's about working on that skill. Freshman Rosenberg from Evanston, Illinois. Gives it up. This is Simmons. The ball just sticks, and that's why, you know, it's just sticking in their hand, and that's why they're having a difficult time finding open teammates. Ball thrown away, 18 turnovers now for Chicago State. Griffey thought he was bumped, no call, but he still makes the goal. Well, he stayed under control, took the hit, and was able to complete it. Bertrand <laughs> knocks the pass away. It's going to stay with Chicago State, but you can see the athletic ability of Joseph Bertrand. Yeah, I mean, he can run the floor, and he's active. And, and, and then that's what Bruce Weber needs from his guys off the bench, that active body defensively, especially running the floor, giving them the easy opportunity off turnovers. That's the kind of energy that he got from this group in the first half. And Bruce Weber able to kind of steal a yield of eligibility with Bertrand. He's a redshirt sophomore, so he's actually been around the program for three years just learning how to play Big Ten basketball. But the tools are there. Yeah. It seems like throughout the years, even back in your day, Illinois has always had toolsy guys who can run and jump. Well, it's a marathon. You know, it's not about how you started or where guys are in front of you. It's where you're going to end up. And if it takes an extra year for you to get there, it can, it's going to help you in the future if that's your career choice. Egwu makes the shot inside his first two points. And we're going to have an and one situation. Robinson makes the goal and is fouled. I'm going to ask you kind of a big picture question. Illinois over the years, this last 30 years, they've always seemed to have had as good, if not better, athletes than any other school in conference. Is that because of the proximity to Chicago where there's a lot of kids and running and jumping is valued, or is there a rhyme or reason to that? Well, I think it's a combination of, of the two. I think, yeah, you know, in, in Chicago, obviously, athleticism is 
is enhanced. I mean, guys want to grow up dunking, and especially emulating Jordan, who was there all those years and, and wanting to be like Mike and be like Scotty. You know, it kind of catches on. But also, I, I just think Illinois likes athletes. I mean, so they go out to recruit them, and historically, that's been the case. Started with Lou Henson with the flying line, I led by Kenny Battle. I mean, and it's always just persevered here, having these athletes in-house to be able to play the type of basketball that's needed. Abrams, extra pass inside. Edwood, good catch and score. Well, he did a smart thing. You know, early in the first half, he brought the ball down below his waist, got it knocked away. That time, kept it up high to his advantage and put it back in. Yes, me. One of the best athletes on this year's team, maybe the best, is the biggest. 7-1 Myers Leonard. He has shown me just incredible athletic ability. And I think he's I think he's taken the opportunity to be a leader and, and, and really to go after honors all Big Ten to to be looked at as one of the top players on this team. And, and he's there. I mean, he's going to be counted on for a lot with his athletic ability. If he was 6-3, I think he'd be playing in the Big Ten. And he's not from Chicago. He's from Robinson, Illinois. Here to Biddy Town. Egwu takes his time. Now with eight points. You know, again, you, when he catches the ball and he has his feet set, he has some nice little moves around the basket. Nice little soft touch. He's showing it with the jump shot and now keeping his rhythm on the layup. Under 12 minutes to play. Illinois in control, trying to get to 6 and all. Rosenberg has it ripped away. It's going to stay with Chicago State. Timeout on the floor. 11.42 left. Right. Illinois looking really strong on a Sunday afternoon. When things were tough, you kept believing in me. You helped make this happen. Thank you. Behind every open heart is a story. Tell yours with my open heart collection at K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. There are millions of reasons to give one, but the message is always the same. Keep your heart open, and love will always find its way in. You did it, Daddy. We did it. Every kiss begins with K. and intensity. The Big Ten's fiercest competitors leave it all on the floor every time they take the court. Be there for every thrilling matchup all season long. Big Ten Women's Hoops only on BTN. Find tickets to upcoming Illini games. Join online auctions. Shop for Illinois apparel and subscribe to all access programming at the official home of Illinois Athletics FightingIllini.com Now part of the Big Ten Digital Network. BTN goes where you want, when you want it, with BTN to go. Presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Watch live games and BTN original programming, all on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. Plus, on-demand options include greatest games and re-airs of top matchups featuring Big Ten teams. BTN to go is available at no extra charge to subscribers who receive BTN through their cable, satellite, or participating video providers. To learn more, visit btntogo.com. BTN Men's Basketball is presented by GMC. We are professional grade. And by State Farm for auto, home, life, and banking. Get to a better state. And Rotel and Velveeta. Together, their queso dip is sure to make any get-together better. Well, quite a treat joining the Big Ten Network this year. Eddie Johnson and Eddie is today State Farm's state of success. What a player he was. Coming out of Westinghouse High School in Chicago, Westinghouse Warrior at the same time with Mark Aguirre, putting up close to 1,700 points. Currently seventh all time. At one point, it was number one all yeah. time in yeah. Illinois history. Look at the banners up there. Good old number 33. There he is, Eddie Johnson. Must make you feel great coming back here to Assembly Hall. No doubt about it. I mean, this is where I grew up as a man here and, and learned to play the game of basketball under Lou Henson. K. 
came here as an all American and didn't play with about nine minutes a game my freshman year but taught me a lot of lessons and I tell coach this all the time. He's the reason why I made it because he humbled me. You know and we've talked about a few of the players here today that are str that have struggled but now are growing as players like Miles Leonard uh, guys is getting an opportunity to play. You don't know where they're going to be three years from now. I mean that's that's the beauty of, of attending a, a great university and uh, I have a lot of memories here. Coming out of Westinghouse High School why was uh, playing for the Fighting Illini attractive and what made your decision a final one to come here. Well, I thought Lou Henson for one. I, I just really enjoyed the way he coached from afar and uh, felt that I would become a better player here. Nice feet. Crandall head finds it cutting Mike Henry Henry playing in his just his second game this year now with seven points. What a high school team that must have been you and Mark McGuire. Yeah it was you know and Skip Dillard and then Bernard Randall oh, yeah. went on to DePaul and had tremendous careers. Uh, we had a tremendous team 29 and 0 and then uh, Phillips High School beat us in the championship game led by uh, Darius Clemens. Uh, stopped my dream of coming down state so I said OK well I'll just attend <laughs> Illinois I'll come down anyway I'll come on a scholarship <laughs> how about that inside the Nelson he's a Chicago kid Thornwood High School his first two points of the game and this building is still a tremendous building it's just, it's just amazing how this building has persevered as other schools have rebuilt this flying saucer down here in Champaign still stands up. Pass too hot to handle. Turnover. Mike Shaw throws it out of the bounds. Nine turnovers now for Illinois. You talked about bodies changing from an 18 year old to when you graduated at, at 22. You played in the NBA for so long. You're known for just being in great condition. What are some of the things you learned at Illinois in terms of how to get your body where it needs well, to be? Well I think you learn basically to just be committed uh, to what the professional people here have in mind for you whether it's weightlifting whether it's diet. Uh, obviously taking care of the academics becoming a mature individual all those things adds up to longevity at the next level and I think I learned all of that here but uh, for the most important thing right now these young men have to stay tuned stay in tune with what coach Weber wants of them you know the opportunity to come to a university on scholarship is a tremendous advantage that's not given to everyone and and if your goal is to make it in whatever uh, you have to be focused and you have to get the job done. Line I up by 30. It's their first game back from Cancun. Played a couple of games down in Mexico winning the Cancun challenge. MVP of that tournament was DJ Richardson making the all tournament team Sam Maniscalco. Kind of a difficult time getting back. It took close to 10 hours <laughs> to get from Cancun back here to Champaign. That was actually on Thanksgiving Day. So a couple of light practices and now back on the floor and it don't look any worse for the wear. Well having to fly to Indianapolis uh, because of customs and then the bus ride over added to it no doubt about it. But look they didn't have anything else to do. <laughs> enjoy enjoy winning the tournament and then enjoy being around your teammates. I mean what I take away from basketball and what I miss the most is the fact that I don't get to hang out with teammates and have a good time. And so as I said your four years at the university is the best years of your life and that's when you have to enjoy it. Nana Egwu has picked up three fouls so he goes to the bench. Ibi Jim Day replaces him. Still with close to 10 minutes left to play. Bruce Weber protecting Nana Egwu with those three personal fouls, bringing him onto the bench for a while. Mike Henry triggers the inbounds over to Abrams. Randall Head, Jim Day, and Henry, the five on the floor. Now that's Shaw, number 15. Shaw's a big body as well. Young players trying to get some experience against Chicago State now. And before the shot, ball's going to be turned over. And trust me, coming into this game, the bench players were telling the starters, look now, don't mess around. This is our opportunity to get some big minutes here. <laughs> you know, and that's what they look forward to. So it's important that the starters come out and play well, and Illinois did. They got a tremendous lead, and now they allow the guys that work them hard in practice and support them for most of the time during the year to have their time. Foul's going to be called on Ibby Jim Day. Foul 
they're going to call that a flagrant one, flagrant foul one. Didn't see exactly what happened, but it's going to be two shots and the ball for Chicago State. Wow. And he's still standing. <laughs> yeah. Jim Day was guarding off the ball. Simmons and he's pulling on the jersey. Pull the jersey and wow. Mm. Now, there's no such thing as an intentional foul in college basketball. It's now called either a flagrant one or a flagrant two, and that's I guess maybe I'm, the name sounds a little bit more. I'm curious than it really was. Well, I'm curious why the official thought with Illinois up 28 points that he was trying to commit <laughs> an intentional foul. <laughs> Well, grabbing the jersey shouldn't be rewarded anyway. It was, you know, it was a lazy foul, I think, at any level of basketball you play. So Chicago State down by 28 now. Still trying to put some points on the board, but running out of time. Fisher misses, falls to the ground. Every time Fisher shoots, he falls to the ground. That's something he has to correct. Left-handed layup up and in, Mike Shaw. Everybody getting touches for the lineup. Had almost had himself a steal. It looked like it looked like Simmons retouched the ball after Head got a fingertip on it. The official didn't see it that way. The line I have four freshmen and one sophomore on the floor. Randall Head, the only player with experience from a year ago, on for the line I. Bruce Weber, for the most part, this game has kept his starters together, and when he's gone to the bench, it's been all bench players at the same time. Abrams over to Henry. Nice catch and score. Yeah, Henry just moves around to areas, and it's obvious his teammates know when he's in that painted area around that rim, they just need to just throw it up. He goes and gets it. Seems like Henry plays bigger than his 6'5", 230, doesn't it? Yeah, he does. He, he is active. He is going to be a factor for them this year. Just with his ability to work his way around, not having a play ran for him, but have the ability to score. And it's going to be a foul called on Tracy Abrams. And that's the seventh team foul on Illinois. It'll be a one and one situation for Chicago State when we come back. Illinois ahead seemingly comfortably. Even the highest efficiency dishwasher can't remove spots from your glasses if you have hard water. But a Culligan High Efficiency Water Softener can. The Culligan High Efficiency saves you up to 46% in operating costs. And it makes your glasses look 100% beautiful. Through this Monday only, get the Pantech Breakout for $49.99, the free LG Enlighten, or a free Xperia Play by Sony Ericsson. The smartphones are ready, the tablets are wrapped. Now through Monday only, get the technology they love on the network they deserve. Verizon. Culligan has a wide range of bottle-free drinking water options for your home or office for just three cents a glass. There are no bottles to lift and you never run out of bottled quality water. Right now, you can rent your choice for $10 a month for the first three months. Culligan, better water, pure and simple. When the final buzzer sounds, our analysis begins. The finale presented by Reese's. Highlights, insight, and all the post-game chatter. The finale presented by Reese's. Tonight at 9 Eastern on BTN. Tomorrow, we unveil the football all-conference teams and announce various individual award winners. The Big Ten Football Report, all-conference selection show presented by K Jewelers. Tomorrow at 7.30 Eastern, only on BTN. This is Jacob. He makes cereal for his little brother every morning. He also washes the car, but probably should have rolled the windows up. This is Jacob's dad. He left for Afghanistan almost a year ago. Behind every serviceman and woman, there is a family that serves as well. Now it's our turn. Thanks for holding down the fort, Jacob. Let's all join forces and show our thanks. 
Welcome back, everyone, to uh, Assembly Hall here in Champaign. Here are some games coming your way on Sunday. Next after our game, DePaul and Northwestern, that game up in Evanston. Women's basketball continues with LSU and Ohio State. Buckeyes ranked 19th in the country. And then how about this for a nightcap? A battle for the state of Indiana. The Butler Bulldogs going to take on Tom Crean's Indiana Hoosiers. That'll be followed up by the game of the week. It's a football game. Ohio State and Michigan playing yesterday in Ann Arbor. Let's take a look at our Verizon Key Connection. Eddie. Find a big man underneath the bucket, reward him, because he's going to pay dividends defensively for you. If you do, you've got to reward the big guy. That's what they used to tell me all the time. But I was shooting too much. I said, well, get it off the offensive glass, <laughs> big fella. But I'd give it to him every now and then. You have to connect with him. Now, Tracy Dildy, Chicago State Cougars. Having a hard time right now in the second half. They trail by 32. Illinois has been a balanced team. Already 10 different players have put the ball through the hole. Well, Tracy will tell you, you know, in order to win in basketball, you got to have some horses with you. You got to have some guys that can play. And that's the challenge for Tracy Dildy is to continue to grow this program to be able to compete with the Illinois of the world when, when they do go visit. Mike Shaw hits it from behind the arc. That's his first collegiate three pointer. Showing that he can do that. Fisher nowhere to go. And we're going to have another foul on Illinois. You know, when you don't set screens and you don't help a teammate get open and you're trying to do it off the dribble. You're just guard them. I mean, it, it, and that's what's so difficult right now for Chicago State, and that's why they can't get a rhythm, is because they're just very guardable because it's obvious that whoever has the ball is going to try to make something happen with no action away from the basketball. Robinson stuck on 12 points, misses the front end of a one and one. Again, nothing but young players on the floor for Illinois. Elbow jumper, Abram. Next up for Illinois, Big Ten ACC Challenge Tuesday night. Down in College Park, Maryland, taking on the Terrapins. Geez, three different bodies on the floor, no call. And Illinois comes out with the basketball. Crandall head in transition. What do you think about that shot? Well, he shot that like he didn't want to shoot it. <laughs> I mean, you know, he kicked his right leg up, he faded backwards, and all those things that I'm sure the coach is going to show him on the on the screen when he uh, gets to watch uh, film. <laughs> That's one of those, you know, you shouldn't even shoot the ball. You know, you had no chance. Shaw goes to the bench. Nana Egwu back in. You must have been a shooter because you recognize that right away. <laughs> I've been told many times not to shoot it. Egwu turns around. I'm telling you, Mike Henry making up for lost time. Didn't play in four games, now has 12 points off the bench today. That's where you beat his own. You get it in the middle, especially a big guy like Eagle, and just he finds the guy on the weak side. Great, great offense. Hey. Illinois a point away from tying their highest point total of the year. Bodies flying, guys getting a little bit chippy right now. Well, and always, I always have a problem with that. Because uh, my question is, why weren't you chippy at the two minute mark? <laughs> it's over. You know, it doesn't make any sense. Down 38 points. Just play. Maybe Jim Day picking up his third personal foul got tangled up with Jeremy Robinson, and I wouldn't be surprised if Bruce Weber takes Jim Day out immediately. Getting a little hot under the collar right now. No need for that with 521 left. Let's see who goes to the bench. 
Yeah, it's going to be Jim Day going to the bench. And this is going to be a teaching moment. Bruce Weber making sure that maybe Jim Day know what's expected uh, of a fighting Illini player at all times. Well, to understand that when you're embarrassing a team that you're going to have some confrontation. It's important you just walk away from it. But it's also important that you don't back down, <laughs> you know, and so you're kind of caught in the middle there because, you know, basketball is a confrontational sport. And so you have to man up a little bit, but you have to be under control while you're doing it. Abrams, Head, Shaw, Henry, and Egwu. The five on the floor for Illinois. Turnover gives it back over to the Cougars. And the shots missed from distance by Jacoby Anderson. And we're going to have a block along the baseline called on Quincy. Yukagwi. This is a game that Bruce Weber, he's just hoping the clock just hurry up and takes down. <laughs> you know, because the, the longer this game goes on, the, the worse his team starts to operate offensively, and it carries over, believe it or not, to, a, to the next practice. And he wants to end on a good, solid note. Abrams gets in the paint, dumped down. Edgu can't finish, gets it back, and now puts it in with the foul. And what I love about the play is the fact he did not hang on the rim and try to retouch the ball because that would have been goaltending. He felt confident enough to recover the ball and finish. Now this young man here has some skills. He has some opportunities, especially in that paint. Now I look for him before this year is over to be getting some decent minutes. You remember how much things change for a young player when non-conference part of the schedule is over and you start Big Ten play? Yeah, it, it, it's a shock, no doubt about it, because the physicality ups itself. The officials allow you to get away with a little bit more. Uh, but then the, the challenge of having to win your conference games. But also, if he's learning every day in practice with the body that he has, he's going to be fine. is bumped by Egwu. Four fouls now on Egwu. That's something that he's going to have to figure out what he can and cannot get away with. The first thing is to realize you only get five fouls. <laughs> Once they figure that out, then you have to go backwards. <laughs> Because the, they always want to challenge, you know, and, and you got to be smart at times and say, you know what, you got to make that tough shot. You know, I'm not going to bail you out. So with the four fouls, Ed is going to go to the bench. Maybe Jim Day, you'd imagine, has cooled down. He comes back in. Well, it was a teaching moment, no doubt about it. And you, you want the young man to understand that, you know, we want you to play physical, but you don't have to verbally back it up. You just play physical and walk away. And those are the most dangerous players, are the ones that just hit you, but they don't say anything. <laughs> those are the ones you want to stay away from. Rosenberg misses the second free throw. Picked up by the Cougars. Robinson gets it back. Looked like he was hacked on the wrist. No call. You hear a bunch of slaps. Nothing called with four minutes to play. But it normally happens in a blowout game where the officials subconsciously are trying to get that clock to wind down. And all of a sudden, the slapping and all the hitting that would happen early in the game aren't called fouls now. Four freshmen and a sophomore on the field, on the court right now for Illinois. Brandel had the lone experienced player, and he just had a handful of minutes last year. Head, yes, on the baseline. Abrams is a smart player. I mean, he saw it a few possessions earlier in that offense, but he took his time and he set him up. Illinois with a new season high in points scored. Previous high had been 79 against Lipscomb. Head's done it inside, trying to do it from outside. Misses the jumper. And Rosenberg ahead of the pack. That's why I say a layup is worth how many points, Eric? 
two. That's what I thought. <laughs> Offensive rebounded inside by Yukagli. Extra possession for the Cougars. So yeah. Clark Rosenberg has dunked over a 7-1 Myers Leonard today and missed a dunk. With he no missed it on an invisible man. <laughs> Wraparound pass to Owen in particular. Careless turnover for Chicago State. Abrams has his legs taken out from underneath him. He did the right thing, no doubt about it. But throw it up high. That's what you do. When you have an athlete, just put it above the rim and watch head fly. Ready for your present? Yeah. All right, I'll be right back. Okay. Sometimes the giving can be just as amazing as the gift. What do you think? <laughs> the Lexus December to Remember sales event is here, but only for a limited time. See your Lexus dealer for exclusive lease offers on the 2012 CT200H. And as a gift from Lexus, we'll make your first month's payment. set great thanks Mike thanks for doing that discount double check you saved us hundreds what was that the discount double check it's when we comb through your policies and make sure that you're getting all the discounts you deserve no I get that part but you guys are doing my move the discount double check move it's my touchdown dance so you're a dancer no I'm a quarterback oh quarterback more I'm a robot <laughs> mm -mm. <Where's> your <laughs> get out of here Aaron Rodgers got his how about you Rogers! discount double check get to a better state State Farm Mike Hall here in our BTN studios with a news of the day coming from Champaign. Head football coach Ron Zook is out at the University of Illinois. It was a seven season run for Ron Zook, which had two winning seasons, only one winning Big Ten record. The highlights, of course, included the 08 Rose Bowl. We'll have more on this on the finale later on this evening. That comes up after our fourth game, which is Butler and Indiana men's basketball. Up next, however, Morgan Jones, Brittany Orban, and the rest of the Wildcats will try to take down a ranked to Paul Foe. That's coming up in about 10 minutes. For now, back to Champaign and you, Eric. Mike, thank you so much. Illinois trying to get to 6 and 0. Oh, they're going to get there. And there are six unbeaten teams so far in the non conference portion of the schedule remaining around the Big Ten. Tremendous start for the Big Ten, no doubt about it. And making their name heard around the country in terms of what they have done non conference wise. And what a boost of confidence to start coming into your conference knowing that you've built a cushion that can lead to maybe an at large at the end of the year. And that's what it's all about in your conference. You want to have a lot of teams supporting you in March and a lot of teams are on their way. So at the bottom of the standings Michigan State three and two but a huge yeah. asterisk next to that they lost to North Carolina and Duke no shame in that. And they, and they lost on a they lost on an aircraft carrier. <laughs> yeah. Playing outside. You're a great shooter back in your day man. Yeah. You didn't have to shoot outside on an aircraft carrier. You got to test the rim. You got to test the win. No doubt about it. It was a tremendous game but a tremendous opportunity too. I mean I'm sure just they lost the game but they wouldn't trade it for anything. Left-handed jumper missed by De'Ari Nelson, and it has been a long time since the ball went through the hoop for Chicago State. They are 0 for their last 11 from the field. Now Bruce Weber going to clear the bench. This is Sean Sellis, senior from Montreal, Quebec, coming on. Day is done for Tracy Abrams. We're going to have a pushing foul along the baseline. So it seems like a long time ago, but we've talked about the, the bench players for a while now. Get final thoughts on, on the starters Maniscalco, Richardson, Paul, Griffey, and Leonard. 
how you felt they played well, today. Uh, they played well and a solid five. But here's the problem, and I talked to Bruce Weber about it uh, before the game. Is you know they go small, and and so when you go to three guard offense, you know that third guard, whether it's Paul, whether it's Richardson, they really have to play bigger than what they are, and that's going to be the key there. I mean, how well those three play together? Do they get easy opportunities off turnovers? And then Miles Leonard, does he continue to block shots and play big inside? And that's going to be the key for this ball club. Minute and a half to play. For Chicago State, their tough stretch of road games is going to continue. Their next game is on Wednesday against Illinois State. Now how about an exclamation point to the, the day that Mike Shaw has had. He has done nice work defensively. He's run the floor. He's made a jump shot. He's made some free throws. Seven point day for the freshman you know, Shaw. You have to be ready to step on the floor and play. And oh, Illinois, I, they've had every player that has stepped on the floor has made an imprint on this game. Mike Henry, two more. No wipe off the basket. They're going to call it travel. Are you the dunk. kidding me? You know, you're just supposed to get that to him for stop. You know, sometimes you have to ignore it. <laughs> so it's a travel. Take the two away from Henry. But he gets three for stop. <laughs> Under a minute to play. Illinois up big on Chicago State. And this got to the point they're not even hitting the rim. Kevin Berardini in for the first time sophomore from Lake Forest Illinois going to finish off the game number 44 in white this is Berardini. Jim Day inside still learning still growing. Yeah and event supporting them. that's what you love to see from your starters knowing the guys that normally sit there and cheer for them on the court doing well. Taking the charge with 22 seconds left is Ibby Jim Day. Well, I'm sure they have a stack in the locker room on taking charges, and he stood there and took it. Got outside the circle as he should and took the hit. Today's GMC professional grade player of the game, DJ Richardson, 11 points, five assists, and a couple of rebounds in limited minutes today against Chicago State. So congratulations to DJ Richardson and all the Fighting Illini. Just a nice performance from start to finish. To go to 6 and 0 in the year. Yeah, a, a tremendous effort coming out and not taking for granted a team that had been struggling. They came out and tried to stay within their game and scored 90 points in doing so. So, Bruce Weber and the Illini, they double their pleasure. Final score 90 to 43. They are a perfect 6 and 0 on the year. Next up, they will take on the Maryland Terrapins on Tuesday. For Eddie Johnson and our entire Big Ten Network crew here in Champaign, I'm Eric Collins saying so long from Assembly Hall. The proceeding has been a presentation of the Big Ten Network. Now, let's send you to the BTN studios where Mike Hall and Tim Doyle are standing by. Eric, thank you again. The news of the day in the Big Ten football coach Ron Zook is out as the head coach of the Fighting Illini. Seven seasons. He ends on a six game losing streak, though his team is bowl eligible. And if they were to win that game, they would win back to back bowl games, which doesn't happen all the time in Champaign. Defensive coordinator Vic Koning will take over as the interim head coach. You look at his record 34 and 51 in seven seasons in Champaign in conference just 13 and 18 and 38 only one winning record in a season in Big Ten conference play and only one one more home game than he lost those two bowl games again last year's victory and the Rose Bowl in 08 which was a lost Mike Hall and Tim Doyle here. We're about three and a half minutes away from taking you to women's basketball. The second of our four game lineup of basketball games and we'll start by showing you what just happened in Champaign Chicago State and Illinois. Always nice when you win by more points than your opponent scored. Illini 5 and 0 for the first time in three years. That is Myers Leonard who is ready to have himself a day tipped in by Tyler Griffey there for 10. Here's Sam Maniscalco. Bailey transfer, pushing it up. Give and go, gets it right back. Illini up 13 to 3. 
Here's a, here's a highlight you don't see every day, Tim. Yeah, I think Leonard thought he was going to go off the glass. Instead, the facial. Clark Rosenberg with the slam. DJ Richardson finds Joseph Bertrand. Oh, look at that athletic move. Illinois up to 15-point lead. Under five to go, Richardson from deep. He had 11 in the game. It was 44 to 19 at the break. Second half, more from the big fella, Myers Leonard. Finish him! Finish him! Illinois wins again, 90 to 43. And Myers Leonard had all of 68 points all of last season. He's well past that already this year. We're not even into December play. The guy's an absolute stud. First of all, he's a freak athletically. He jumps so well. We see that highlight there. And then he runs the floor. And now he's sticking 15 foot jumpers. Mike, this is actually flat out unfair from a kid who's seven foot one from a small town. He's still growing into his body. And then here's why NBA scouts are absolutely drooling. This athleticism is just unparalleled. His strength is getting better. See, last year he doesn't finish this. That contact knocks him off. He's growing into his body. But here, this play right here is why he's a next level type player. He sees the floor extremely well because when he catches the ball in the post, he's going to be double teamed because he's that talented. He needs to find that open man. But this Illini team is kind of sneaky good right now right. and their defense has been the reason why they've been so effective. 6-0 and on the season. A great start for the Fighting Illini with a Big Ten ACC tournament coming up on Tuesday and Wednesday. Before we go, the late game, our fourth game is Butler against Indiana. This Indiana, speaking of impressive, they've won every game by 20 points or more so far. Yeah, Cody Zeller's really meant a lot for the Hoosiers, and this is an important game for Tom Crean, because Brad Stevens is everyone's darling in the state of Indiana, so is Butler, back-to-back -back Final Fours. You go out and win this game, a game they're heavily favored in, now all of a sudden Hoosier morale starts get going there in Bloomington, and now the Hoosiers are everyone's darling in the state again. An important game for Tom Crane, because I'm sure he hears a lot of the whispers right. going around the state. That game comes your way on BTN, 6 o'clock Central Time. For now, women's basketball is next. Dave Bennett and Mary Murphy have DePaul at Northwestern. Welsh Ryan Arena, Evanston, Illinois. Today it's a crosstown battle in Big Ten basketball. The Northwestern Wildcats welcome in the 20th ranked Blue Demons of DePaul. And hi everybody, welcome to Big Ten basketball. Along with Mary Murphy, I'm Dave Ennett. We've got a good neighborhood battle for you. A couple of crosstown rivals, DePaul and Northwestern. Mary, they know each other very well. They're both off to good starts. DePaul suffered a disappointing loss out in Hawaii. Northwestern 4-0 coming off a huge win for them at LSU. I just think this is a sensational start for both of these teams today to, to get into it, a local rivalry, but with national implications. Northwestern comes off a victory over LSU at LSU and for DePaul ranked 20th. I mean, this game is a game of opportunities for both programs. DePaul always dominant against teams from the state of Illinois. Let's look at DePaul's starting lineup. It's a veteran lineup as well with uh, two seniors in the starting lineup. And they've got their leading scorer, Anna Martin. Also, the freshman, Deanna Ortiz, or the senior, Deanna Ortiz, making the start. The one freshman is the guard, Rinko, Brittany Rinko. And Northwestern, on the other hand, has a freshman backcourt. But it's a talented backcourt with Morgan Jones and Carly Roser, the Big Ten Freshman of the Week, along with the upperclassmen, Brittany Orban, Kendall Hackney, and Danielle Diamant. Joe McEwen has done a terrific job as the head coach at Northwestern now in his fourth year. 48 wins as the head coach of the Wildcats. 557 career coaching victories for Coach McEwen. And his opponent today, Doug Bruno at DePaul. Tremendous success for the Blue Demons. 491 wins. He's closing in on number 500. 15 20 win seasons, 16 NCAA tournament appearances. And he's 13 and 6 against Northwestern. But a couple of years ago, when DePaul came into Welsh Ryan Arena, the Blue Demons knocked them off. The Wildcats won that game last year. The, the Blue Demons evened it up. 
How about the keys today for the DePaul Blue Demons? Well, a very different Northwestern team this year without the big body in the middle, Amy Jeschke. It's all about fast break. It's about up tempo. So for DePaul, number one, they really want to shut down the fast break, force some bad decisions, and control the boards. Northwestern's done a great job, especially with the senior Brittany Orban, of crashing the offensive boards and creating offense from that. How about the keys for the Wildcats today? Well, the Blue Demons are doing an amazing job of knocking down threes. 42% of their shots so far this season, it's a young season, are from three-point range. So they've got to contest out of that blizzard zone defense. It's going to be very challenging. Northwestern also has to limit turnovers. They're averaging about 18 a game, and a team like DePaul wants to get up and go themselves. They want to push tempo. Those turnovers will be costly. The turnovers, Mary, possibly a function of having two freshmen handle the basketball? I don't think there's any doubt about it. And it's a much different style, like we just mentioned. So they want to get up. They're making some early mistakes, trying to get comfortable with each other. And for DePaul, you know, in talking to Doug Bruno, he said, you know, it's not like I want this team to take this many threes. But, hey, if you can make them, it's okay to take them. And he's riding that wave as long and as far as it'll take them. 11 three-point field goals a game on average for the Blue Demons leading the Big East Conference. And that's considering the fact that they lost one of their top three-point shooters from last year, uh, Sam Quigley. So we're just about set to go. There is Joe McEwen on Autism Awareness Day at Welsh Ride Arena. We'll talk more about that. The third annual Autism Awareness Day. We'll talk about that as this game goes along. 28th time these teams have faced each other. It's been a good rivalry, as we mentioned a couple of years ago. Wildcats won it. There's your officiating crew Michael McConnell, Rochelle Jones, Bruce Morris, and DePaul controls the opening tip. Catherine Harry, Jr. from Columbia, Missouri, pulls it in, and DePaul goes to work in the front court. DePaul yesterday at practice worked a great deal of the time on their zone offense, just trying to find gaps. Right now, Northwestern comes out in man to man, and right into some motion goes DePaul. Tough shot in the lane, and it's good. Anna Martin picks up where she's been leaving off. Had 22 last time out in the win over Hawaii, including five threes. And immediately, DePaul gets the ball right back. Well, they want to run some pressure, and whether it's full court, three-quarter court, half court, they want to put some pressure. Why not? You've got two freshman guards out there. Try to take advantage. A little floater tipped out of bounds as Hampton put it up. It'll be Northwestern ball. Inbounding the ball is Morgan Jones, maybe the, the, the highest regarded recruit Northwestern has ever signed. The big expectations of her, not just this year, but for years to come, has All-American potential. Of course, they had a McDonald's All-American in Amy Jeske, who graduated as Northwestern loses the ball out of bounds. There's a turnover by Kelly Roser, but uh, partly Roser, but they lost uh, Jeske, of course. Now they get another McDonald's All-American in Morgan Jones, whose sister, Taylor, is a holdover for the Wildcats. She's a sophomore. Will come off the bench. And on the left on the drive. And a steal. And there she is. Jones, right place, right time. Yeah, excellent rotation in the man to man defense. And I think it's a good game plan early by Joe McEwen. Do not allow this DePaul team to get wound up in three point range because once they get comfortable, it, they can really put you in a hole early. Bob inside intended for Happy is taken away. Martin with the step back. Missed that one, and Jones clears for Northwestern. Slow pace scoring wise to this game. Northwestern struggled shooting the other night at LSU, but still managed to come out with that win by the slimmest of margins, 44-43. Jones had a tough night shooting. She misses that one, but an offensive rebound by Roser. And Orban is fouled on her way in, fouled by Catherine Harry. You're talking about Brittany Orban, always working hard, gets the dish, takes it hard, gets the hard foul, and she's just always in the middle of the action. Harry, the big post inside for DePaul, really the anchor in the middle for the Blue Demons. Orban, 71% from the line on the season, and Northwestern has struggled from the line as you look at Doug Bruno. And the free throw line has not been kind to the Wildcats in the early going this season, shooting just 57%. It's an area you have got to improve in the preseason as you prepare to go into conference play. Urban makes one of two Northwesterns on the board. Down two to one. And the turnaround, no good. Got it back. Missed again. 
DePaul a high scoring team. They average 90 points a game. So they are not going to get discouraged with early misses. They're going to come down and keep going after it. Daniel Diamant. And the three, no good by Kendall Hackney. Ball loose on the floor and finally gathered in by Rinko. The post players for Northwestern, they can invert, they can post up, they can play high post, they can get pulled out to three point range. Great versatility in Hackney and Diamond. Three point shot, good, and there's one of those 11 threes a game on average for DePaul and the Blue Demons. You see the numbers tied for second in the nation in that category and it's a five to one start. Brittany Rinko starting at the point guard as a freshman. They had another freshman Shanice Jenkins starting early in the year. She has suffered from an injury so great depth youth wise for the Blue Demons once you get Jenkins healthy. Misha Hampton number 24 the top scorer for the Blue Demons. Preseason all Big East performer. Tremendously talented. She can take you off the dribble, shoot the three, post you up, plays excellent defense, has all the tools to play at the next level. She's a very special player. Wildcats 0 for 3 from the field so far with three turnovers. The turnaround by Hackney ends that drought. Kendall Hackney brings Northwestern within two with her first field goal and the team's first field goal. Dave Hackney's really a rhythm player. She came off that screen got the pass just when she needed it and really nice turnaround great job of executing the offense. Screen set there by Hampton who gets the ball. Hampton behind the back bounce is intercepted by Jones. She's been in the middle of the action defensively already. Trying to get it in there to Orban and it's taken the other way. Martin throws up a shot, tipped out of bounds, last touched by Northwestern. Will be the ball ball. This is Anna Martin from Nicholsville, Nicholasville, Kentucky. Averaging 21 points per game, and Doug Bruno mentioned yesterday it's about time the coaches in the Big East Conference really take notice, and maybe she starts getting a little bit of attention. She has had a special season so far. Two point shot by Hampton misses. Hackney and Jones converge for the rebound. And we can see Joe McEwen on the sideline saying, come on, let's pick up the tempo a little bit. Let's push the ball. We don't want to walk it down. They go inside, Orban. And a tough shot there. Orban relocating and gets it in and ties the game. The versatility of this Northwestern team this year without Amy Jeschke, you have opened up a whole lot of space inside. A lot of big bodies, small bodies that can flash and be productive in the paint. All trying again from downtown and saved out of bounds. It'll be to Paul Ball when we come back. Kendall Hackney ends the early drought for the Wildcats. We're tied at five. I push these legs as hard as I can. Then I treat them to pure silk. Pure Silk Shave Cream conditions and moisturizes for legs like Pure Silk. Looks like, feels like legs like Pure Silk. I don't want to get up. I don't want to go to work. I hate mornings. Great, I have 20 minutes. No time for coffee. Hello, my friend. Can't get it together in the morning? Try 5-Hour Energy. It's simple, effective, and unlike coffee, it's ready right now. No waiting, no hassle. Let's do this. Five Hour Energy, the no wait, no hassle way to a great morning. Saturday, December 3rd. Experience the first ever Big Ten Fan Fest presented by Dr. Pepper. 200,000 square feet of indoor fun at the Indiana Convention Center. Fans with game tickets get in for free. Ticket information available at Big10.org.
final buzzer sounds, our analysis begins. The finale presented by Reese's. Highlights, insight, and all the post-game chatter. The finale presented by Reese's. Tonight at 9 Eastern on BTN. Tomorrow, we unveil the football all-conference teams and announce various individual award winners. The Big Ten Football Report, all-conference selection show presented by Kay Jewelers. Tomorrow at 7.30 Eastern, only on BTN. There's a lot more action coming up later today on BTN. Coming up next, it's a top 25 women's matchup between LSU and Ohio State. And immediately following that game, it's an in-state rivalry between the Butler Bulldogs and Indiana. And at 9.30, it's our football game of the week between Ohio State and Michigan from the Big House. That's all later today on BTN. Northwestern and DePaul tied at five here in the early going. Jones, Kendall, Hackney there. What a great game that LSU Ohio State game is going to be with Sammy Perhalis, Taylor Hill in the backcourt. Talk about up tempo. Here, Jones will be back in the studio and we'll see how many adjectives she can come up with <laughs> for that backcourt. You see the early shooting here to Paul around 22% so far in this game. Hampton to the foul line behind the back. And a steal. Roser. Numbers here for the Wildcats. Ahead to Jones. Freshman to freshman in the foul. You can see Roser really taking her time, trying to wait for the passing angle to, to open up once she gave it up. The ability to get to the free throw line. Just focus, focus. Once you got the commitment, you give it up. And Morgan Jones, one of the things she's done a good job of early on in her career, getting herself to the free throw line. Morgan Jones. 73% from the line in the early going. From Altamont Springs, Florida. Younger sister of Wildcat guard Taylor Jones. And Northwestern has the lead. Now, by the way, was on Anna Martin, her first third team foul. Kelsey Reynolds has checked in for Brittany Renko. Renko, excuse me. This is, I believe, a 6-0 run here as Roser in traffic fouled. The Paul quickly getting into a little bit of foul difficulty in the opening six minutes of this game. And maybe a little inexperienced there by Roser. Really got herself deep and then needed to get bailed out. Let your teammates fill. Hackney for three. Short and out of bounds. Kendall Hackney's having a great start to this season. And last year gets DePaul 23 points, 12 rebounds, was 10 at 12 from the free throw line. So Doug Bruno and DePaul well aware what Kendall Hackney can do on the floor. Those 12 rebounds marry a career best for Kendall. DePaul the ball down by two. Western remains in the man-to-man -man defense. We have not seen the blizzard yet. And the ball sticks in the side. So it will go to the alternate possession. Shot clock is running down. Northwestern. On a 6-0 run here after falling behind 5-1. Wildcats inbound the ball and 34. Taylor Jones is in the game. Full court pressure by DePaul. Face guard, the floater. Just trying to mix and match. Just not allow Northwestern to catch a rhythm. Try to throw some different looks at the freshman point guard, Roser. Kelsey Reynolds, sophomore from Mishawaka, Indiana, transferred to DePaul from Boston College. Some great players out of Mishawaka, including Sharon Versup, head coach, Purdue University. There's Doug Bruno. Has a court named after him. You know you're a legend when you're still <laughs> coaching, and the court you play on is named after you. Any young woman in the city of Chicago that plays basketball has attended a Doug Bruno basketball camp. He is uh, as special a man as he is a coach. He is really uh, a great credit to women's basketball. DePaul has 
been in a drought here. Blue Demons have gone about four minutes without a field goal. But when you're in a drought and you're only down two points, you're, you're doing a pretty good job, job on the defensive end. And Harry ends that drought. Blue Demons were 2 of 11 before that, and we're tied at 7. You know, Big Cat Harry is someone that uh, the Blue is really waiting to reassert herself. They need her, her minutes and her, her attempts in scoring down low. It's a Northwestern turnover. That's the sixth Wildcat turnover. Mr. Theatrical, Joe McEwen <laughs> on the sideline. Inside to Harry and goes to work on Danielle Diamant. 101. There's no double coming in on her. Excellent job with her back to the basket. Joe McEwen very successful in non conference games at home in the regular season. And DePaul regains the lead. Regal, or check that, Reynolds scoring her first points. Nice move there, a little up and under. And Diamond leans in and fires. Rebound, Brittany Orbin. Brittany Orban just gets inside and takes care of business. Doug Bruno focused a lot on the effort that she will give and how you've got to get a box out on her. Counted and one for Diamond with the left hand scoop and a chance for a three point play. Danielle Diamond, you know, at the end of this year, people are going to talk about her as possibly the most improved player in the conference. She has put her mind to getting in better shape, being more focused on the floor. She's not just wandering around out in three point range. She's inside, she's outside. She's got just a more focused game than she did. Her dad flew in from Vegas yesterday to watch her play. She's fired up for this game. Her grandfather, of course, Jerry Tarkanian, the Legendary coach at UNLV as she makes the three point play. And Northwestern by one, 10 to 9. Second foul, by the way, on Catherine Harry. That's a big loss for DePaul. They don't have a lot of depth. And here it is, Northwestern now extending their defense. 1 2 2, three quarter court. And McKeown will switch up those defenses. Martin. Near side to Kelsey Reynolds. Now we're seeing some blizzard. Some zone defense by Northwestern. They get another turnover. Yep, it produces the steal, and the long three is good. Now they've extended the line out for the women this year. It doesn't matter for Danielle Diamant. I mean, she has got unbelievable range, and you add some inside presence to that. She is just really a special player this year. Diamond with a three point play and now a three point field goal came in shooting 45% from beyond the arc. This was well beyond the arc. And that was from the football practice field. What a great <laughs> look. And you can see no hesitation. Didn't look around for anybody to pass the ball to. During the fall, Joe McEwen just sat down with Danielle Diamond and said, hey, it's junior, it's time. And I think sometimes when a, when a, a player, a student athlete sees, sees the finish line, when you've turned the corner and you only, you only have so much time left, it really kind of puts into focus what you need to do to be successful. Wildcats with a four-point lead. DePaul basketball. Reynolds will bring it up for the Blue Demons. DePaul 29-7 a year ago, tied for second in the Big East. 17-0 at home. Always tough on their home court. And the answer with a three-point shot. Big shot for Anna Martin. When you talk about a player having a special season, Anna Martin just continues. 20 points a game, 62% from the floor, 58% so far from three-point range. They go inside. Diamant with the turnaround missed. Martin brings it up. Allison Maki, number 12, in for Northwestern, and another three. You mentioned earlier, DePaul will not get discouraged by early misses, and you can just see Anna Martin go to work, didn't use a whole lot of space to get open, get freed up, and launch another three. Eight points now for Martin, a pair of triples. Maki, Taylor Jones, a little touch pass inside, nobody there. The hot hand of Anna Martin. A three-pointer, and then moments later, another one lifting DePaul to a two-point lead. Yeah, I'm married. Doesn't matter. You do that for me? Really? 
Yeah, I'd like that. Who are you talking to? Uh, it's Jake from State Farm. Sounds like a really good deal. Jake from State Farm at 3 in the morning? Who is this? It's, it's Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis. She sounds hideous. Well, she's a guy, so... Another reason more people stay with State Farm. Get to a better state. Tomorrow, we unveil the football all-conference teams and announce various individual award winners. The Big Ten Football Report, all-conference selection show presented by Kay Jewelers. Tomorrow at 7.30 Eastern, only on BTN. This is Jacob. He makes cereal for his little brother every morning. He also washes the car, but probably should have rolled the windows up. This is Jacob's dad. He left for Afghanistan almost a year ago. Behind every serviceman and woman, there is a family that serves as well. Now it's our turn. Thanks for holding down the fort, Jacob. Let's all join forces and show our thanks. Interact via social media and purchase tickets to Wildcat sporting events today at the official home of Northwestern Athletics, nusports.com. Now part of the Big Ten Digital Network. BTN Women's Basketball is brought to you in part by Pure Silk Shave Cream. Soothing aloe gel plus fabulous moisturizers help your legs look and feel like pure silk. Today is the third annual Autism Awareness Game at Northwestern. This game between Northwestern and DePaul. And we talked to Northwestern coach Joe McEwen about the reason for the Autism Awareness Game. The biggest thing for us, create awareness still and, and to create uh, some type of um, reason for kids to get out of the house today to maybe never get to go to a college basketball game. It's really special for them. Um, we, we do a walk at Soldier Field. We're involved in that. Uh, for autism, we were involved in Washington D.C. and you know trying for years to to be involved. But to do this today and, and uh, to have it as a college basketball game, I, I think it just puts things in perspective. Have fun with it. You know? Coach McEwen mentioned the walk at Soldier Field in Chicago, in which DePaul coach Doug Bruno has also been involved and volunteered his time. This is a cause which is near and dear to the heart of Joe McEwen whose son Joey has autism and so coach McEwen is a leading advocate to uh, raise awareness of autism working in concert with the Chicago chapter of Autism Speaks and so this has turned into an annual event and I'm sure it will continue at Northwestern very successful. And look it's no secret why coach Joe McEwen left George Washington where many people thought he would never leave. He came to Northwestern because of the schools in the Evanston and the Chicago area that his son Joey could go to uh, and he wanted to mainstream them and, and that's why they the family picked up and made the move. So he has taken his commitment to, the, to this issue and broadened it out to try to help others who perhaps aren't as fortunate as the McEwen family. 16 fouls now into Paul as Diamond makes the two free throws. Yeah. They're really seeing the versatility of Danielle Diamond putting the ball on the floor, shooting a three, posting up, really making her presence felt on the floor. Martin. Hit back to back three pointers. And there's the Northwestern foul, just the second called on the Wildcats. Danielle Diamant already with eight points in the game. Hampton puts the ball on the floor and she is just such a difficult matchup because she can knock down that three great quickness off that initial move can get to the foul line just creates contact majoring in engineering and science came to DePaul comes to Chicago from Philadelphia and they've got a nice little pipeline going from Philly back to Chicago and DePaul University Doug Bruno working that very very well 108th consecutive start for Keisha Hampton. The Paul team lost two key players from last year and we mentioned Sam Quigley earlier and also Felicia Chester who averaged about 11 points almost seven rebounds a game but they've got plenty of talent on this roster. And what a special season a year ago finished second in the Big East and everyone knows what a tremendous accomplishment that is get to the NCAA tournament once again. Three point shot rims out for Hackney. 
And a foul on the rebound. They also, as you look at Roser, they also won an NCAA tournament game at Penn State. And to win on a as a visiting team. Then they played Duke down to the wire before losing 70 to 63. And no coach is ever happy to go into uh, be the higher seed and go play somewhere. Third three pointer for Anna Martin 11 points or six time double figures in six games this year and the Blue Demons continuing to pile up the threes. It is no mirage. She had five threes against Portland earlier this season. She can really light you up. Hackney trying to answer with a deuce. And a foul called on the rebound on Northwestern. But here is. Yeah, you got you got to get the memo out. You cannot allow her and you could see that the defense really shift. They thought she's going to put the ball on the floor and Anna Martin is just right out of old school. I mean at practice she's rolling her shorts up. She just brings her lunch bucket and her hard hat and she gets after it. DePaul 57 percent from distance four out of seven. This week on BTN.com don't miss any exciting hoops action go to video.btn.com this week check out our upcoming basketball schedule. And just to finish the thought on DePaul going to Penn State I mean so many coaches just out you know they'll just say it just isn't fair for us to have to go to Penn State and play but the only thing you can do is go there and win and just take care of business and you know teams in. in, in the Big Ten Conference and the Big East Conference, they play a lot of tough games on the road, and you have to take that experience once you get to the tournament and put it to work for yourself. There's Rinko. Picks up her dribble. 